Good morning. Hi, everybody. Sorry for starting a little bit later today, but we're here to check out a brand new game, New Cycle. And it literally was I, I, the second I could download it, we did. So we're only starting one hour and 43 minutes later. <laughs> so hello, how are you? Welcome on in. We're checking out a brand new survival city builder. I, I, I'm a little worried. I hope it doesn't get too, too dark. I'm hoping it's more on the on the um, spectrum of Timberborn to Frostpunk. I'm hoping it's a little more Timberborn. But let's jump in. Let's have a good time. Let's get right on to it, shall we? Look at that. Oh, it's got that fresh game smell. Wow. What up, MacBody? Good morning. Never heard of this game. I mean, it just came out. Is this a bikeable city? I, I got bad news. It's probably not the new cycle because it's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Pink Floyd. Yes, thank you so much for 49 months. Thank you for being the first sub of the day. Appreciate you tremendously. Ooh. All right, there we go. Hacker voice, we're in. As always, with a new game, let me know how the audio sounds, how the balance is, if there's any weird stuttering, all that fun stuff, you know? So the premise of this game, and maybe they're they have a maybe they have a bit of story, we'll see, is that some weird giant solar storm came and wrecked everything. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, let's just drop it down to high, just in case, you know? Hey, Sora. Thank you for the 100 biddies. Quick update. My D&D game is now a total of 25 players. That is so chaotic. All right, we're going to play the campaign mode here. The meadow, the tundra, or the steppe. Home to open stretches of land and fertile soil, this biome transitions relatively smoothly between seasons. Though not overly challenging in terms of food and water, underground resources can sometimes be scarce. Less settleable land, rich agriculture and water, rich forests. Or there's the tundra. With few wooded areas but fertile soil, this biome is home to rich underground and surface water but a mostly arid climate where winters can run longer. Not a lot of agriculture, not a lot of forest, but a lot... Wait, that's just all... That's just hard mode. Hold on. Tundra feels like home right now? God, don't remind me. Wait, what is it today? Ah, uh, it's only minus 25 today. Balmy. Oh my God. And the steppe, an environment that lacks trees, but whose fertile soil and vitality can provide an adequate food supply. Limited water and winters without snow can pose occasional challenges. You know what? Let's just go with the meadow. That seems like my vibe, you know? The first step, choose a location. All right, so what are we looking at here? Uh, we've got these old roads. Ooh, oh my goodness. All right, first up, this game is very pretty. Like very, very, very pretty. Look at this, look at this old lighthouse. It's a rune. Options for the a vanishing remnant of the old world. May still hold gifts for us. Yeah, so... I don't know if I actually finished my thought. The premise of this game is that there was a solar storm that hit and it wiped out like all of the global infrastructure. So it took out the power grid. Uh, and then because there was a disaster, everybody kind of like immediately went to war fighting over resources. 
And then generations have gone by. So presumably nobody who exists anymore is actually aware of what the world was like before the storm. Ooh, look at this. We have Pig. Let's see how it goes. Hey, Artemis Huntress, how are you, friend? Thank you so much for using your Prime here. Thank you for 28 months. Good to see you. Sora, thank you for 150 biddies. Little hydration check. Oh, I am on coffee number two today. So I think I'm good, but thank you. <clears throat> I think I want to be over here by the trees. But let's find out. We've reached an unknown land after a long journey. It seems isolated and safe. We hope it'll offer enough resources for a new start. Choose the most suitable spot to settle in the area and guide us for our base. Let's begin. <clears throat> there was a bit of a crossroad right here. What if we just build right on the crossroad? Can I slowly rotate? Oh, there is. Oh, look at that. There's an invisible grid. It's very, very, very faint. You can, I can only see it right by that rock, right? If I move it over, you can see it. But if I move it over here, it's basically invisible. Audio is good. Maybe bump it up a little. Thank you, sweetie. From initial looks, it feels a lot like Farthest Frontier. So this game has electricity is one of the big things, right? Like we get into power supply. Uh, there are trains. Uh, what does Tab do? Oh. So Tab removes the grid so we can freeform. Whereas this is snapped to 90 degrees. All right, let's put it right there, right along that road. Welcome to New Cycle. You are now the governor of the little community. It's been nearly half a century since the first solar flare. In the initial months of the catastrophe, we lost our entire technological infrastructure, our means of global sourcing, and almost everything that we can share as a civilization. The following years were humanity's darkest, having to wrestle with constant impossibility and despair. From battles fought with sticks and stones to nuclear wars, we ended up destroying ourselves with what little sun we had left, and civilization fell. Everywhere here was born in this new world, and you have to be their leader. Our current flimsy shelter can't carry us far. We must rebuild everything from scratch. We must rebuild everything from scratch with the efforts of those who remain so we can establish a sustainable way of life. We need to rediscover our lost knowledge, explore our surroundings to create new possibilities. Most importantly, beyond merely surviving, we have to find a way of securing our next generation by whose time the world may not be habitable anymore. Oh, we don't know how we can pers wait. We don't know how we can preserve life as we know it, but we can help build something that we call home. Cool. Uh, we're going to definitely do the tutorial. What's up, Learland? Morning, Triple. Good morning, Mr. Sarkan. Welcome, everybody. How are you, Willie? Thank you for the 38. Every time I see this number, it gets bigger. Yeah. All right. Transition to settled life. Chief. Living so long as nomads, we feel ready to build a simple shack at the very least. We want to settle down here. We'll need more durable shelters, workplaces, and storage depots. And for that, we need to get our hands on resources. So build a field camp, gather logs, and gather stone. All right. Hey, good morning, Corflux. Good morning, or Orcanus. So resources. Right. It just taught us the difference between the grid system and the non-grid system. Amazing. So this has wood. This has iron. This has stone. This has wood. This has wood and stone. You know what? I kind of like the one right here. Uh, we don't need iron yet, but maybe that will change. So what if I put it right here? With the understanding I'm going to build a road off of this probably at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle. So I don't know if trees how quite this works there's a density of the number of trees that we're on that seems fine i like this 
Sticks and stones to make our homes. I love that. Oh, under construction. Oh, that's cool. So how, how do we see that? So are our little people going to walk out? Oh, this is cool. Look at this. So they've, they've kind of automatically started moving around and building tents sort of organically in the surrounding area. Oh, I love that. Oh, how cool is that? Hello. Who are you? Children will live in a Lewis Miller, worker. Oh, and they're walking out with their stuff to go build the camp. Oh, that's cool. All right, up top, we can see our resources. Uh, we've got water. We've got apparently none food. We've got 35 people. We've got pretty standard controls to get around. Oh, that's cool. So our science just progresses by itself. So workers make worker level science. Uh, we don't need like a dedicated science building. Great change. All right, I want stone and I want wood. So let's do that. Their last name is Miller and yet there is no grain yet. Yet, we can get there. Quick tip, you can change the game speed by hitting one, two, or three. Spacebar pauses. Great. All right, so we need to collect wood and stone. So I'm going to do that. Uh, it looks like we get 18 per day of wood and we get 14 per day of stone. So it's going to take us two days. Just got here and I might have to buy another game. Apologies. Love a good space bar pause game. I, this feels very traditional in the genre right now, right? Like of all the survival city builders we played recently, the UI of resources at the top, game speed, pausable, right? Buildings at the bottom. Oh, there we go. Process and development. Off to a promising start. We may go on gathering nearby resources for a while. We should focus on producing more complex materials. So build a lumber mill. Okay, now let's actually pause this for a second and let's take a look. Actually, let's go down to one. So one thing I'm curious is, do these resources get consumed? So when I click on stone, it doesn't look like there's a count. So these do not look like finite resources. And similarly, I don't actually see them cop like chopping down the trees. Uh, so that's kind of cool. That means that as long as maybe this is the, the assumption, this means that as long as we're nearby these resources, they don't get consumed. Hey, good morning, doodly do. Playing games where P was the pause button and spacebar just works. What were we even doing there? Oh my God. The chaotic before times. So for production, I need a lumber mill now. And there is this tent there. Wait, hold on. Uh, there's two roads here. So what if we put it here at sort of the crossroad of these two roads? I like this plan. So once again, it's under construction. Let's leave it at two speed here. We start the construction. People walk out carrying... Look at these boxes. Dang. Christopher Mitchell. Wait, I like the babble. Listen to this. You did well, the innocent. You really did. Have a de ba. Now, oh, there we go. Two thousand storage, one thousand storage. Great. Okay. Hey, good morning, word nerdify. So hold on. Can I pause? I can. This is a production building. Production buildings are the most important structures in your city. You can choose the product you want. A building can only create one product at a time. Click to continue. Target production. You can activate the building by selecting the product that you want to produce. You can also access production information rates by hovering the mouse over the icon. Hey, Nibbles. Oh my God. 26 months of the God sub. Thank you. Fun fact. A 26-sided polyhedron is called a rhombicubohedron. <laughs> Nailed that. 
You thought that babble was English? Really? We'll try clicking a couple more times. Be interesting to differentiate between turning tearing the trees down for big one-time amount of wood or a smaller but renewable ongoing one. Well, we've played different games that do that, right, Triple? So in Timberborn, for example, lumber production, you have to constantly manage the planting, growth rates, and harvesting of wood. Whereas in Farthest Frontier, trees have this sort of automatic cycle of planting, like of automatically regrowing basically anywhere. I mean, I guess it doesn't talk about what you're doing specifically about resource exploitation versus renewable, but like, it's always neat to see how games do that sort of system, right? Uh, Farthest Frontier also has um, endless resources versus expendable resources. And I think um, Timberborn added that for metal as well, right? I guess it just depends what they want you to optimize or work towards, but I digress. Is my game paused? I'd like it to be paused. I don't want to run out of food while we're doing the tutorial here. Uh, Timberborn has a new update called Bad Water. Is that public yet? I've been keeping my eye on that Ink Slayer, and I thought most of the Bad Water was still just in an experimental beta branch. Oh, my tea is way too hot still. Thank you, sweetie. All right. <clears throat> Efficiency. Production calculations. Every time I click a new tutorial, the, uh, the time unpauses. It's live as of today. No kidding. Huh. Production calculations. The amount of resources and time required for production are calculated dynamically. The general efficiency value of a building operating class. The general efficiency value of a building's operating class affects these variables positively or negatively. In addition, the workforce value determines the speed of production according to the required amount of working people. Okay. Labor. Oh, cool. So we have the different the different classes. Okay. Certain classes of society become the operating labor force of certain production buildings. Okay. And then finally, here's the statuses. So it's not on the road. It has no workers. So if we give it five workers and it's not connected to roads currently, which means it has a minus 30 effect. So interesting. Okay. Good morning, Dogma. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of games that I'm very excited to check out. Uh, one of the things to note is, and I haven't announced this yet, is I'm actually going to be in Victoria for a week, Monday to Monday. So we've got today, and then we've got Saturday, Sunday to check out some new games, and then we've got a long break, a week-long break, where I'm going to, you know, do a bunch of lure stuff. And then I'll return triumphantly and we'll have so much more fun st stuff to check out. Very exciting time. So we're just letting the game run right now while we produce 30 more of this. I'm a little bit nervous about my water and my complete lack of food, but I'm sure the tutorial won't allow us just to die, right? <laughs> right? Please? Wait, a group of travelers appeared near our settlement. <gasps> Hello. Who are you? A group of unfamiliar people are approaching. I wonder if this means we get new friends. Death is a learning experience? Well, I guess we should always have the, the dwarf fortress approach of... Um, what is it? Losing is fun. Dying is fun. What do they say? Any uh, Dort Fort enthusiasts in the chat? All right, so really quick. Every operation is hard to perform in a settlement without roads. Build a road between the lumber mill and the main hall. Okay, but also, really quickly here. Who are you? This group of wanderers, each less fortunate than us, wants to join us. Great, I'll have two more workers. So I need to build roads here, eh? Road. By pressing tab key, you can switch between grid-based or linear. Okay. In curve mode, you can hit shift. Okay. So I got a dusty road here. I 
I want to kind of respect this curvy road as it already existed, you know? Oh, geez. So we're building that. And then I also had this one right here, right? Oh, look at those roads. That's cute. And then we've got, oh, what's this? Source of life. Uh, make a well. That makes sense. But give me a second. Before that well, I want to make this road here. This 90 degree road, right? There. Good stuff. All right. So now I need to make a well. Oh, this is exciting. So we've got a well, well, underground. And let's put it right here on this crossroad. Actually, let's put it right here on this crossroad, a little bit closer to everything, right? It looks like if I do that, it destroys a rock, though. Let's put it here. Well, well, well. Hey, good morning, Rakes. It is losing its fun. Thank you, everybody. Finds a cool game to put on the wish list. Turns out it's already on the wish list. Blame Surge. Apparently, the originator of this problem is actually Ink Slayer, who introduced us to this game one demo day a long time ago. So how much lumber do I have? Oh, it's right there, front and center. 52 lumber, great. We have begun construction on the well. The well is done and we are now collecting water so we don't die. That's great news. So, oh, we don't have to assign workers. Great, it's making 96 per day uh, and we're only consuming 19 per day. So that's good news. You'll enjoy, you'll shoulder this burden. Morning Lilith. Daily bread. Now that we have access to water, we are only one step short of calling this place home. A life without worry. Wait, can I? Are we paused? Uh, nothing's moving in the background. Great. A life without the worry of hunger will turn us into a real society. Although we don't have enough resources for hunting, farming, or animal husbandry, our experience in staying alive by living off the land might come in handy. Oh, cool. So we can do a gathering camp to collect mushrooms. So it's probably under resources. Here's a gathering camp. So we've got two mushrooms there. We've got what? Ooh, we can eventually get meat later. That's exciting. Oh, nice. We have meat and mushroom here. So what if we put it right here in the woods, right? Slot hits. Um, is there a spot where I can hit all four? Yeah, right, right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a road from it. Straight to straight to our road here. Good stuff. Morning, Angclag. So is this our season? Ooh, no dangerous weather events observed so far. That's good. All right, let's go up to speed number two here. Oh, well, 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 would you look at that? So resource nodes are in fact consumable. Neat. We just don't get a finite number for it, but we are in fact consuming that. Oh, that's neat. That's good to know. Another interesting thing is check out this aesthetic. Uh, these are power lines. So as we build the roads, we're actually extending a power infrastructure. It also looks like we have, we've somehow managed to keep like old scrap metal drums with us. That looks like, um, like rubber 60 gallon thingies. So the technology of this is in an interesting spot, right? Yeah, we have a windmill currently. Oh, we're actually producing 200 power currently. Fascinating. So this has been built. And once again, let's get people actually working here. And now we have food, which seems very important.
Great. Produce 40 mushrooms. That should take half a day once this gets cooking, right? 72 per day. Now, do we eat mushrooms directly? A natural food source, often harvested in damp environments, providing basic nutrients. Okay, great. I guess our people just haven't been eating this whole time. Where's the electricity coming from? We have a windmill. So our little camp here is producing a little bit of wind, wind power. It's coming from a source I like to call hand wavium. <laughs> and we're producing a total amount of uh, don't worry about it, you know? All right, one more resource stick and we're there. Difficulty settings are very granular. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really dive into it too much, but I did watch a little bit of um, City Planner Plays introducing this game. So I saw his breakdown of all that stuff. The time has come to cook proper meals. People eating whatever they have on their plates doesn't mean they're happy about it. When there's nothing to eat, they'll get demoralized, sick, and possibly even fall into the jaws of death. From now on, food needs to be kept fresh and distributed while it's hot. For a start, a bowl of soup will do as long as everybody has their share. They won't have to worry about hunger anymore. So we want to make a soup kitchen and we want to produce 30 meals. Unresearched. How do I research? <gasps> oh... So let's actually take a look at the science tree really quickly here. So in cycle one foundations, uh, we get access to basic construction. This will give us stockpile, the soup kitchen and soup. And then later on, we get to unlock living standards. And then once we get to cycle two, community needs, hunting, metalworking and the power grid. Oh, that's cool. Let's research basic standards of living. Look, we've forgotten everything. When civilization fell, <laughs> we lost a lot. Now, do I get to see our science progress without clicking out here? So the active research is down there in the bottom left. Ooh, stats. Big fan, big fan of stats. Log production, excellent. Do we have basic standards of living now? Not yet, no. Hold. <laughs> yeah, look at that. All of our workers just naturally... I really like this science. I don't know if I've ever seen this particular style of science in a game before. So the way Farthest Frontier does it is... Um, you unlock tiers as you unlock your city, as you level up your city center. Timberborn and a lot of other games, you have to assign workers to like a science building and then they produce knowledge at a certain rate. So this is interesting, you know? Well, there's another stone deposit over here. There's also a boar. Is that an old one? An old boar? A baby boar? Oh, there's a whole family. Look at them all. I do really like this road method. Just extend the road up a little bit here. How many boars are there? I'm hoping somewhere in the realm of um, 1 to 29 feral boars. Any more than that, it just gets too dangerous. So as soon as we're done basic construction, I'm actually going to start living standards afterwards. I got a hint. Oh, interesting. Science also takes resources. So 385 knowledge, but it also costs us planks. Cool. Projected renewable rate of resources next spring based on precipitation. Precipitation. 
Okay, so water will come back. That's neat. Oh, all right. So our development just ended. Uh, develop. Let's start research over there. And let's build a soup kitchen. And residences. Oops. Shoot. Where do we want this? You know what? Let's put it directly across. I think what we're going to do is we're going to put homes here. And then, uh, can I see stuff like where where there's good farm area? Is there like a um, photo mode? Awesome. Oh, there we go. Water layer. Wind. Okay. Fertility. Oh, wait, actually, that means I should put my houses here. And this should be where my farms go. Okay, that's, I'm glad I checked. Farms there, houses here. So let's actually put our, our kitchen um, right next to our... Ooh, it's smaller. You know what? I could actually put it right here. You know what? Let's put it right across. This is fine. Finally, streets that you can relate to. I'm kind of enjoying going for more of an organic feel compared to the normal, just like grid grid I always do. Oh, this is... <laughs> uh, that's not what I expected. Oh, well, that's awkward. Our roads are going to be a little lumpy, all right? Wait, if I don't have a soup kitchen yet, how... I guess this is my starting soup. We've developed the shack. Thank you. Hey, Dappy Gosling. Thank you so much for 39 months, friend. Hope you're having a great day. So our water is positive. Our food will be positive shortly. Just speed up the game here pretty quickly. I love these little camps. It looks like a couple of them vanished, though, when I, I built the roads. But I imagine everybody's just happily living in here. Happily. All right. So select a resource. Ooh, poached fish. So for six mushrooms and two water, I get 29 soup per day. Oh, it's winter now. They have a little broom. I love that they're just outside sweeping the walk, right? Game's got a little bit of like a Fallout 4 aesthetic. I mean, yeah. If we're talking about like dystopian modern. A little bit less electricity and like people in power armor so far, but we'll see. I do like that aesthetic, you know? All right, so I don't love how these roads turned out. I'm going to be honest. I didn't realize there was like a uh, a contour going this high or whatever. <laughs> What's up, Manfred? Good morning, Manfred's cat who just held down the S key. You love to see it. Nice view here. Already a small little hamlet. Yeah, we don't even have houses yet. We got uh, 37 people sharing one tent. <laughs> it's cozy. It's cozy. All right. Oh, emergency work shifts. 
Inpatient rest leave. A good sleep and the relief of having no work to do next morning. There's no better environment for healing. Interesting. I mean, it is the winter time, and it is important for everybody to stay warm. That's for sure. Oh, hello. Look at you pulling what looks like an empty cart. Ooh, population management. We must closely monitor the community's situation, needs, morale, and all related factors. We must try and reach the best possible outcome in our affairs and adapt according to uncertainties. All right, explore population management. Um, here, population management. Here you can view the overall status of the community. Okay, we've got morale and efficiency. Now, currently, it looks like our efficiency is quite low because our morale is bad. Class. Workers, craftspeople, and specialists. Okay. Our society consists of three basic classes. Members of each class must work as a pioneer in their respective fields. But production buildings may need multiple classes to work simultaneously according to the level of development. Okay. Oh, our population. 37 adults, 2 children, and 19 unoccupied. And so that presumably means people who don't have jobs right now. Only adults can work. Children, sick, and retirees cannot work. That makes sense. Here's our food supply. Alright, workforce and efficiency of each social class are the two most important indicators that shape life in your settlement. Workforce indicates how much or how long your working classes will operate. Very important to manage the variables according to current conditions and needs, while balancing the flow of production and life. Long working hours can cause low morale. Yes, that makes sense. Even this is accounted for. Remember that exhaustion can lead to sickness, sure. And then efficiency is calculated based on morale and is the basis of production. Okay, so what if we... Oh... What if we gave them more soup? More soup and more water. Ooh, well, hold on. Can I support 56 water per day? That's a big bump up, but our morale was previously low and maybe now it will be high. You know? Oh, I also have none housing, so that might be able to help as well. What's up, Lirzel? My city is currently named Camp Name. Oh, we could change that as well. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, supply and demand. Set ration distribution to regular. Wait, I don't know if I can support that, but the, tutor the tutorial won't lead us astray. What should we name our city, chat? Camp name. What if we called it a brew hope? Huh? <laughs> Camp Joe? Oh, wow. Everyone's saying Camp Joe. I mean, a brew hope is kind of funny. Wait, the tutorial will lead me astray. That's terrible news. All right, we're going to go with a brew hope, but Camp Joe is very strong. Camp crush your dreams, but I like my dreams, Rakes. Joe-pocalypse now. <laughs> we're going to go with a brew hope for now. We can change it later. All right, so my food. We're producing 26. Oh, I guess the update will come in later. I wonder if I'm going to need a second well. Well, well, well. Let's just assume that more water is better than less water. Do 
Camp Joe when we are not playing the tutorial. I like that idea. I like that idea. This game is very pretty, by the way. Ooh, okay, so we are chopping down trees. Let's take a look at this now. So, I haven't noticeably... Oh, there we go. Available resources. So, there's 1,600 available wood here, and there's 2,600 available stone. There's the number. Demolish. I don't know what that does. So, it'll be interesting to find out if this game has a, um, a move building function later on, you know? Let's uh, advance time a little bit faster here while we wait for the tutorial to end. Construction completed on the new well. So that should be... 192? I don't know how math works. Looking at the map, at least the campaign metal starts appears to be the same map. Oh, that's good to know. A place to track everything about your settlement and your people is the view overview panel. Health is the subject that we should pay the most attention to. It should be our priority to find a solution to our current conditions. Examine the factors affecting public health and make a decision. Hint, there are many factors, factors that affect people's health. Nutrition and water are the most important. No one can go without water for more than three days. You need to produce solutions against many variables, such as the seasons, work-heavy conditions, epidemics, insufficient supply, and harmful external effects. <gasps> so where's the overview panel? Oh, it's here. So our health is currently negative 43. Well, that's bad. So currently the season is minus 20. Housing is minus eight. Oh, we also have a, a, an attraction for how attractive our place is. I mean, it seems like housing seems uh, kind of important. Tutorial complete. We have finally secured our self-sufficiency. I changed the... Whatever. Having left our temporary campsite behind for good. From now on, you must devise production plans according to the needs of your people and the settlement. You can set your course by exploring further developments. Remember, we may have no time. We know what to expect, but we can't be sure when or how. Hint, in time you'll be able to produce higher grade goods like clothes, drinks, and paper. Before then, you have to train craftsmen to take part in the production projects. You can start training your people by researching the technical boot camp. Interesting. All right. So let's get some houses down. The most basic of shelters. The shack. It's a little old place where they can live together. So I'm a little bit nervous about destroying these rocks. So let's build our first little housing community here. And... I want to make... Do we know how many people can live in one of these? Let's start with three. Our consumption is unfortunately higher than our production. So I actually have to drop our rations down. So we'll keep them with the high. We'll keep them with the um, the high water, but we're actually gonna we're gonna dip the food down. Oh, never mind. It's gonna be medium medium for both. Hey, good morning, Heron. Visually, it says the same bleak feeling as Frostpunk. Um, this is a seasonal game. The winter will ideally end soon. It was very pretty before. It's a little bleak looking now, but I'm hoping that when winter ends in just a second here, we'll be okay. Also, it seems that winter is important to um, projected renewal rate of resources next spring. It seems like it's pretty exciting to, like, refill wells and stuff like that. Speaking of which, where's our first well? 
Oh, cool. 8,322 water in this well. This one has 6,000. So please remember these numbers, chat. Remember 8,300 as well as 6,700. Let's we'll see what happens. What do the puzzle piece like nubs on the buildings mean? Probably access points is how I'm interpreting them. So they want a road in a certain direction. So I'm building them so that they face the road here. Thank you, Sorator. Oh, new cycle. We've reached the Iron Age. Wow. Buildings and resources that are available to us. All right. Well, 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 well. Let's take a look at our science here. So we can start harvesting iron ore so that we can get tools. That's kind of cool. Uh, we can start hunt. Oh my God. We can start fishing. In order to unlock fishing though, we need 22 tools. So I should probably make tools first. Yeah, also looking at everything, it looks like they really want us to research this first. So we'll do that. Trying to demo and I was a little bit confused what it wanted to be. Still very interesting. The UI feels a little bit closer to uh, Frostpunk. I'm personally getting more of a um, Farthest Frontier vibe. Oh, cool. So these house 10 people each. Um, so let's make a couple more. Oh, I'm short on lumber. Interesting. All right, no more houses. <laughs> oh, interesting. And we also have power consumption. Oh, these are powered. I don't know what that does. Well, let's look at our overview now. Our health is still terrible. And what's interesting is even though we haven't housed, we don't get a percentage for housing. It looks like, or maybe this hasn't updated yet. Looks like we need to wait a little bit longer before housing kicks in. What's this? Not enough resources. Oh, really? Not avail. Oh my goodness, we can't collect mushrooms. Oh, geez. No mushrooms in the off season, chat. Well, that's spooky. Well, I hope our stockpile of uh, 189 soup gets us through the winter. Go a little bit faster here while we wait. Once we hit 27, we can build another home. So I wonder if I can start harvesting iron now. Oh, that's cool. So we learned iron tech and we built our gathering hut so that overlap the iron which means I can just start gathering iron right away now. That's very cool. Uh, I think before we start getting into iron technology, though, we're just going to worry about housing all of our people. So we have 37 people. This is housing for 40. Oh, cool. End of year. Year one is over. Here are some highlights. Zero people died. Two new people joined us. Great. Renewable resources of water, mushroom, meat, and fish replenished by 91% based on yearly precipitation. Water production was more than consumption, so the annual water balance is up by 1,400. Ration production was more than consumption. Annual ration balance is up by 175. Three new developments completed 11 new structures. That's cool. So let's check the wells, right? It was 8,300. Sorry, these numbers are completely different. 83 and 67. Well, this is now 75 and 57. Well, I guess we didn't account for the number going down first. Very interesting. 
working with iron. <clears throat> hey, since we can now process metal, you can give us the means to make tools of our own so that we can see to our daily tasks. We can work without tools too, but this will tire us physically and mentally. And the more often that we have to work without tools, the more likely we'll make a mistake and have an accident. All right, let's do it. So what does that mean? We now have a quest to make 65 basic tools. So a forge will allow us to make ingots and a smith will allow us to make... Sure. Okay, so forge first. That makes sense. Uh, let's make a little industrial district over here. I don't actually know where we're going to want this or if we want like near workforces or whatever. But I kind of like the idea of this. Wait, hold on. Losing hope, an urgent matter. Our unstable living standards are about to consume us. We should strive to keep a close eye on people's morale. If we don't maintain balance, there's nothing we can do. Do something to improve morale. We can do better. <clears throat> Alright, so get morale up to 40. My morale is currently at 10. <laughs> uh, well, the refreshment says plus 40. So maybe we just get there? Hey, what's up, Dylan? Let's bump. Oh my god, that's so much water need. Get water to 40. Well, we can't get water up to 40, right? So I think it wants us to get total morale up to 40. And right now it says that, I don't know what refreshment means, but it looks like we're about to hit plus 40 anyways. Yeah, increase class morale to above 40. And also build tools. Do you think we need a second lumber mill? The lumber mill is currently consuming eight per day. And I feel like we're a little bit bottlenecked by our... Wait. Yeah, objective completed. Oh, easy game. All is as it should be. Well done, Chief. So what do I get? Do I get a reward for that? Oh, I do. A small success. Five days plus 20 morale to everything. Oh, great. Refreshment plus 40 morale to all classes. This year's rains were enough to renew the existing resources. So that's exciting. Good job, us. <laughs> oh, you know the other thing we want to do? I'm probably going to want to build a storage yard. Yeah, stockpile. Nine logs. So if we build this right here, can't, right here. All right, let's start making iron ingots. Now they won't be cold in the winter. <laughs> is the hope. So morale is high. Now, does that give us a boost to efficiency? It does. So I don't know what an efficiency of 70 does. Presumably... Oh, interesting. So this building could produce six lumber every three hours. And with our morale at 70%, we're producing 70% of that. Oh, I get it. Look at me reading the UI. All right. So production, our next step is going to be to make a smith. 12 stone, 45 lumber, and 9 ingots. I have access to all that now. 
You think we should also build it out here? No, this is where our farmland's gonna go, right? I mean, we could put it here. Do I lose a tree if I do that? What if I build it at a 90 degree? Like this. Hits obstacle. Did I build these too close together? Oh, shoot. So does that mean I'm not going to be able to connect it to the road? This is terrible news. Well. <laughs> Interesting. Maybe I should have built the road first. Could turn out that our basic tools are uh, bad. Now. Let's take a look at our science really quickly here. So this requires iron. I think I want to get into hunting or ooh, community needs. We get the tavern. Oh, that sounds great. Let's get the tavern instead. I like that plan better. We want our people to be able to party like rock stars, right? Oh my God. Is it already lunchtime? How did that happen? I guess I did start late. Joe made this delicious looking bison ravioli with an Alfredo sauce. Mm. Okay, no, it's reading is being connected to the road. We are now producing tools. Good news, everybody. Moving forward, upgrade your main hall. A community center made up of just a few tents doesn't feel very secure. We can build something with our resources and crafting capabilities that won't topple in a gust of wind. Let's assign resources and take steps to strengthen the roof over our head. Though it may not please the eye. How do I do that? Actions. Oh. So in order to upgrade. Maybe that's what I'm looking at? No. Maybe it's a new building? Oh. I see. I just need to accumulate resources at which point I can just kind of do it naturally. That's cool. So we're making tools and we're consuming tools. So now our efficiency is up to plus 90. And I wonder if that's because of tools. Oh, tool distribution. Two per day. What's our tool production at? 32 per day. You know what? You know what? Feels like we could probably give out more than that. Oh, that's interesting. So let me do three per day. And I just get like a big old morale boosty right there. Is Alberta freezing? It's minus 25 again today. Which is uh, an unfortunate number. It's a little chilly. It's a little chilly. So I really need more and new people 
Oh, this is perhaps a problem. Oh, no, no, no. We're just producing mushrooms. You're, but we're not stockpiling mushrooms. I think I want to get another resource camp going here. So you got mushrooms way out here. I'm a little bit worried that when uh, winter strikes again, we won't have stockpiled anything. So currently, I believe we have a gathering camp that's hitting those two mushrooms. Yes, because that number is going down. We've got fishing out there. We've got one mushroom way out here. You know what? Let's... Let's move out just a little bit further, shall we? Why are mushrooms a limited resource? I mean, that makes sense to me, right? You're harvesting them. Farthest Frontier, they're a limited resource as well. Hey, Chris! Oh my god, 60 months. Enjoy the new bean, friend. Thank you so much for the support. Time to upgrade the main hall. Let's see what that looks like. So it looked like this before. Ooh. Hey, good morning, Tears Red Right Hand. Good morning, snow people. Yup. <laughs> I mean, for sure. Our health is minus 12. That's honestly better than it was. <laughs> right? Our food distribution rate is minus five. You know what? Let's bump that up one more. Because we're producing 86 per day. So I think if we start feeding them 30 per day, we're in a much better spot, right? Similarly, 192 per day for water. There we go. I just realized something. Knowledge is not spent when researching. Oh, interesting. It's just about how high you can set the bar. I love that. Now, I believe we're in a power deficit right now because this was our power source, right? This windmill. And now that the windmill is gone, we're no longer doing anything with it, right? I was saving up so I could afford the tavern. Are you playing along? Are you playing while I'm playing? Because I love that. <laughs> 50% efficiency because it doesn't have power. Wait, oh, my power's back. Hey, there we go. Yeah, so once again, we're producing 200 power. Ooh, now we got now we got much more of like a little shanty. Because uh, previously it was... What you call this shanty? Was that how you describe this aesthetic? We're getting smarter. Look at this. We're actually raising our storage up off the ground to keep it away from mud or from moisture and pests and stuff. All right, 65 tools get. <clears throat> now, last time we had a little pop-up over there when that worked. Hmm. All right, let's get into... Let's get into community needs. We're going to do community needs first. And then after that, we'll think about hunting. Sorry, is that did I click on that or did I change it afterwards? Yeah, we're currently researching this. Great, 29 hours. We can store 5,000 water. We can store 2,600 food. Great. What does this store? Oh, wait.
Interesting. <clears throat> so what if I brought stuff like this down, right? And stuff like this up. So I could stockpile more of these essentials. I heard fishing minigame. I, there's no fishing minigame. There is just fishing. But welcome, Tim. Welcome. Oh, heck. I didn't realize that we weren't actually... There we go. Now we get another 72 mushrooms per day. We can actually start stockpiling mushrooms. Hey, thank you for using your Prime as well, Tim. Looks like the maximum storage is 15,000. You can change it however you want. Yes, that is my assumption as well. And then this, I think, comes with 3,000 storage, but I don't get to specialize it. Yo, Andercrest! What's up, friend? Thank you very, very much for that five bomb. I hope you're having a great day. Thank you. Now, I realize I don't need this yet, but I'm going to preemptively build another house just in case. Right? We want to, um, we want to ambitiously. Ooh, extreme drought. That's exciting. We want to ambitiously, we want to assume that 13 more people are going to move in because I believe for the next cycle, I need 50, right? Oh, we can make the tavern now. Hold on. Sturdy roofs. Every one of us needs a place to live. We have food and water, but sleeping at whatever nook we find each night doesn't help. Please build three shacks. Uh, does that mean three new shacks? Oh, heck. That's kind of wasteful. <laughs> but I guess I'll do it. I'm out of lumber. I really feel like I need a second lumber camp. Maybe we'll just be patient. That's fine. Sometimes people just show up. Yes. Is this game more chill than Frost Frostpunk so far? Yeah. I mean, I don't know about the threat of destruction. So, like, Frostpunk was never about the mechanics. That wasn't never the hard part for me. Uh-oh. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Uh, the hard part for me for Frostpunk was the tone, not the mechanics. And so, like, mechanically, these... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. A fire is burning. Can I do something? Oh, full response. There we go. Oh, look at this! Oh, that's cool. Uh, so we're using our water supply. I need this. This building is very, very, very important. <sighs> yeah, it feels bad. This quest feels bad in that, like, I have, I have the huts you need. Why do I, we, you know, we only have a population of 37. Why do I have to build three more empty huts for this, right? Oh my goodness, it didn't even count one of those. Ah. <sighs> Anyways. Let's see if we can salvage this building. Will we save it? Wow, we are flying through our water here. That's a little scary. All right, how do we do? This building is collapsed. Oh man. Destroyed by the fire and is not repairable. That is kind of a bummer. All right, well, let's build a new lumber mill, shall we?
Well, it didn't spread and nobody got hurt. So that's good, right? Well, <laughs> we've got to get this plank production back up, and we can finish the build new homes quest. You know what it feels like? It feels like one of those games where in the tutorial, if you think for yourself at all, you get punished. You ever play a game like you ever play like an MMO, and you clear a cave just on your own, and then the quest is like go into this cave and clear it. And you're like, bro, I just did that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a scout from another land. We are representatives of a small community. Our expeditions led us to your settlement, and we were delighted to see such an advanced community. We would like to barter and turn this acquaintance into a trade partnership. Yes. I only have two more days to build this? Well, hold on. So I start at 30 efficiency. Oh, wait. What do you mean ongoing fire? Hello? Where? Where is the ongoing fire? Six days. Wow. I guess people are shook. That's fair. I mean, look, I'd be a little bit shook too. So let's get hunting going. I want to start the the research here. We've got the tools for it. And then the tavern. It's probably under utilities. Yeah, there we go. We're going to need lumber for it. Oh, it also consumes 55 power. So we'll have to get into power generation after this. But we're, my plan is to put the, uh, the tavern directly across from all the houses. So this should line up on time, which is good. Thank you for lunch, sweetie. <clears throat> All right, well, hopefully we can stockpile water again. We are still, wait. Ooh, our simple meals are not quite keeping up. Did I do the math wrong? It felt like when I was looking at this, we could afford it. I guess we can't. All right, let's drop that down to medium amounts of food. It's actually a health issue. Low distribution is a chance of sickness. Okay, you know what? That's fine. <clears throat> we got plenty. <laughs> we'll simply get a second source of food going shortly, right? Oh, you know what it is? You know what it is, I bet you. Yeah, it's because our efficiency is low from the fire. And as soon as this penalty goes away, we're going to start being more efficient. <clears throat> I bet you if we get this quest done, which we should. I bet you if we get this quest done, we'll uh, get a little happiness boosty too. Wow, it's wild how much of an impact morale and efficiency has on all of your production cycles, eh? I wonder if they also build slower. Or maybe that's that's pretty standard. All right, friends. 
What do you think so far? I'm really enjoying this game. It is new while also being familiar. I like that. Build three new shacks. Done. Interesting. I don't get anything new or cool out of that, though. All right. Let's go to our hunt shack, which is over here. And, ooh. So what do I have? I have five available workers. Let's start getting fish. And I'm going to put one person. I need new people. This is actually really spooky. Let's do two and two. And then I've got one person available. Now, oh, maybe this is the plan. Maybe we stockpile fish and meat. And then in the wintertime when we can't harvest mushrooms anymore, we, we uh, do a little Kansas City shuffle and we pivot. That or... Your iron production is even. I'm just like wondering where I can move people. Because I do feel like we have a like we have a worker deficit currently, and I don't know how to fix that. I want to get this tavern down, but I don't know if we can actually work it. Whatever, let's let's do this. We'll get more lumber. 30% efficiency is brutal. Maybe I can up my efficiency by giving them more tools. And I guess we'll also get more workers eventually once our children grow up. So, there's hope. What I'm saying is there's hope. Super low morale. How dare they? <laughs> we'll get this entertainment soon. Ah, these people. So I don't want to build the road yet because I actually can't afford it. Oh, a group of travelers. Yes. This is it. This is who we were waiting for. Let's uh, speed it up so they get to our city a little bit quicker here. There we go. All right. So our morale just went up to 50 because the fire penalty is gone. Oh, man. Well, this is a huge problem. <laughs> they had to go around our road. Can I click on the question mark? No. Not to, like, speed up the quest. Okay, so that should make, yes, everything is just so much better now. Hello, would you like to move in? Group of wanderers plus two workers. Yes. Great news. All right, I need seven more lumber. Can I start the building just like right now? Let's build the road first, just so I don't get burnt like last time. Six lumber. Feels bad. But the hope is I can start the construction. And we'll, uh, yes. Nice. And they'll just start delivering stuff to it as it gets made. Oh, do they not start construction until it's actually done? That's interesting. Oh, a merchant has appeared at the border. Maybe we could do stuff like sell tools and buy timber or something like that. I can't help but notice there's no currency yet. And that's fine. I 
All right, we have a power deficit. That's fine. Oh, this is great. We don't have to work it. Tavern provides entertainment services to the houses within its sphere of influence. Eat yourself. I... <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, no. So these houses are sitting empty. And they're actually starting to... What? And actually, they lose efficiency now. Well, that feels bad. What does upgrading to next tier do? Brick, iron, glass, wire. Okay. Yeah, like the little bit of overgrown on it is neat for sure. Ready for barter. Foreign merchant. A foreigner who wants to trade with his produce on behalf of a small community. Start trade. So, uh, this... Oh, interesting. Okay, they only want our meat. And they will trade us iron ore, bronze ingots, and stuff like that. So, let's take 10 of these. And I'll trade them in meat. Can I just type 40? Uh, shift for plus 25. I don't really need anything else. It's also a little frustrating that they only want our meat, but that's fine. There we go. We have done, we have done a commerce. So the next thing I'm going to need is power generation, the power grid. Don't have the planks. So I want to stop using as much iron because we're actually consuming more than we're producing. So we're producing 18 per day. And now, is there a way to limit? Limit our production here? I'm hoping there is a way. Uh, the other option, of course, would be to get another smeltery. All right, it is absolutely time for a second, a second lumbersmith. Hello, Chris's cat. <laughs> no, 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 Narkur, you're absolutely correct. We're so far behind on this. So, does this... Wait, can I get people to move into one of the happiness buildings here? This seems a little bit silly. <clears throat> oh, I can just demolish these buildings. Nope. Wait, what's this? Storm. 25% efficiency for windmills. Okay. Minus 20 for hunters and gatherers. Minus 200 for offshore fishermen. And I'm also producing electrical deficiency. That's fine. No, you're fine, Chris. Look, we all speak cat. <clears throat> we know what we saw. Oh, two children! Hey, that's great news. I think it might be time for second field camp as well. So let's see if we can find a spot that is all three resources again. So this is stone. This is iron.
Oops, did I spend a bunch of planks again? No, our lumber production is fine. Okay, here we go. Get this built, select resource, get five people on it. But as soon as this is built, we should be back in the positive. Oh, I just realized we also have uh, the piggus right there too. So I have access to one more worker. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna cool it on the workers for now. We just need to wait for science. There we go. And then from there, once we start investing in our power grid, we can start figuring out the next steps. <clears throat> so our efficiency is at 50. That's fine. I feel okay about that. Uh, we are barely stockpiling on tools and ingots. That's kind of where I want to be, right? Our food is good. Our water is good. Uh, we're stockpiling other stuff for another rainy day. I might have to make a, um, a second kitchen at some point, but we'll, we'll get there. Maybe there's a point where we can make it more efficient and have... Have like two recipes going at the same time. I don't know because we got that. We got that meat, right? Oh, interesting. I don't have the workers for this. Of course, I don't have the workers for this. Thoughts. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's just let it run. <clears throat> Let's just let it run. Can I move the workers from one house to the other? I mean, the only button I have is demolish. I don't have the ability to move them, move them, which is a little bit frustrating because I would love for this house to be used because you're absolutely correct, right? Oh, interesting. Yeah, they definitely do chop down trees. And the boars don't attack us, which is good to know. Do you get the resources back when demolishing? So we previously, I thought it was uh, infinite resources, but it does look like they are finite, right? And then what happens is every time a season changes, you get a uh, resource replenishment, which is kind of interesting. So if there's a bunch of droughts chained back to back to back, things get worse. If I demolish something to get resources back, no idea. <clears throat> we could do a little bit of science. Let's demolish this house. So let's take a look at our numbers. Uh, looks like you get half back. 1527, we got, did it round up or down? I think it was a half round up. What's up, Flapjack? You want to share clips? Maybe? I mean, you can always share. We got a clips channel in the Discord as well. There's another place to do stuff. But yeah, for the most part, you're welcome to post links. Destroy houses and make them move in range. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do that, though. <laughs> but maybe it's not a terrible idea. Sorry. Time to move. <laughs> there we go. Hey, all right. We got access to the windmill now. So. That's under utilities. Okay. Harvest energy from winds. Now, there is a wind layer. Which means if I put them up here, my windmills are actually more productive. Oh, that's cool. Oh, look at that. So if I put it there.
I mean, I guess if I have to build more houses, I want to build them in the range of this anyways, which probably involves extending this way and doing a back road. But still, feels bad, right? It feels bad to make a... Uh, to make something and then have to tear it down. Windmills don't appear to interfere with each other so you could stack them close to each other. We'll see. I don't even know how much one produces yet. So we'll uh, we'll learn together, right? Now, why do you have efficiency? Oh, base efficiency, 50% based on location. I wonder how many electrical thingies you need to have to get 100% efficiency. Because, like, this has three, right? I guess this one has five. So right where I built it, there. Oh, even though it hits three. So a better location is here. Is it a one-to-one -one relationship with, I think that's, what, six or seven? I'm trying to count how many nobodies there are there. No, it's it's the base is one plus the number that you have covered. Okay. All right, so what do I need for the next cycle? See what I did there? <laughs> cycle three. I think I have to click on this building to figure it out. So for cycle progress, cycle three, I need 50 people. So I have the knowledge. Uh, I just need to somehow get more people into here. And it looks like it's 50 workers, not 50 people, because we have eight children, right? <clears throat> Subpar morale. That's very exciting. So why is my workforce at minus eight? Is it because of my work hours? How do I change that? Oh. Oh, I understand. So if you work a normal amount, you get minus eight. Interesting. Workforce condition minus five. Okay, so if I do this. So ideally the workforce condition uh, gets neutral. Yeah, I didn't realize that was a slider either because this is a bar that fills up, but clicking on that moving around is kind of neat. I don't have access to any health services, so I'd like them to not get sick. Uh, but then again, I also want to um, <laughs> run a surplus before going into the winter, you know? Now, we do have lots of mushroom soup. Why don't we switch it up for a little bit here? Why don't we switch it up? Uh, maybe we don't need to. Maybe I need a second kitchen, but if I make a second kitchen, then I don't have access to more workers. Wow. Definitely having a, experiencing a worker shortage currently. Very American of me. Well, I would argue that in my particular situation here, uh, the issue is the issue is specifically around like people will die, <laughs> right? It's like, how do I protect the most amount of people? both from a point of view of like literal life over limb here, you know? Oh, wow. All right. I am actually going to uh, turn these both down here. So the mushrooms are doing great. What we want to do now is because we can't gather mushrooms anymore. Let's just get all the beasts. Just a little bit, of, a little bit of micro here, right? There we go. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a second soup kitchen. There we go. And the goal of this one is going to be to make... What do you think? Fish? Fish or, or meat? Wait, I guess fish also just counts as meat, huh? Because I don't see fish up there. Oh, a humble request! We rapidly evolve from a small camp into a proper village. People are the cornerstones of a fast-growing, stable community. Their needs and well-being should be prioritized. Try to raise the morale. I mean... Above 70? That's impossible. Can't do it. Actually impossible. <laughs> How? <clears throat> yeah, 70 may as well ask for a bajillion. True, though. Like, unless something incredible happens, there's no chance. Clothes and health? I don't have that technology. So I can't research any new technology until we get 50 people. Fish soup. Oh, it just makes more soup. Oh. Oh. That's a little disappointing. Naked workers in the winter, terrible morale. I, I don't know what to tell you. We haven't invented the concept of clothing yet. Literally, actually impossible. Now, if I give them even more food, I'll get a multiplier. Up to 55 per day. That is over our consumption, but if we up the morale, maybe the morale boosty actually sets us one higher, right? Okay, I, uh, I definitely don't need two of these now. I have just such a huge deficit of lumber that I'm actually just going to demolish one of these buildings. Which seems kind of wasteful. But the hope is that I can uh, make that up elsewhere. All right, I just somehow need to chill until we get to 50 people. Does the music have to be so melancholy? I mean, it is winter time in their defense. All right, we got to 50 morale. That's not bad, right? Uh, oh. Year two highlights over. Wait. Ooh, plus 40 morale. I think we're going to do it. Zero people died. Two new people joined. So we've only gotten plus four people. Oh, wait. Never mind. It was two new people and six births. So that's good. Wait, did it tell me that one person died? I didn't see that. Where'd that go? <laughs> Come back? Where'd my report go? So children don't take up a full spot in a house, which is interesting. Pretty down with that. And then presumably, 
up to 47. Okay, three more spaces. Let's get back on the old mushroom train here. Wait, available resources, none. Oh, the mushrooms have been completely exhausted. Fascinating. What about over here? Okay, we got the mushrooms back. 2,000 mushrooms available. In my experience, children take up more than one space in a house. Yeah, right? Yeah. Hey, what's up, T-Plane? Thank you for using your Prime. Really appreciate that. Thank you for 61 months. Holy moly. So the smeltery is doing its best. I can add one more worker over here just to keep our tools going up. I feel, unfortunately, like medium stuck right now. I feel like there isn't a lot that I can do while we wait for our population to go up. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts as to how we could make make that number go up faster, right? Objective completion? Yeah. So everything is currently being sustained. But I feel like we're just, we're playing the waiting game until this number goes up, you know? Some there, there was an, uh, an attractiveness, an attractiveness statistic somewhere, right? Attraction. This is better than normal attraction. The issue is a lack of health care. There's nothing I can do about that. Can I upgrade any of our buildings? Maybe through some commerce? Glass wire, okay. Brick, glass wire. Glass wire, brick. Glass wire, brick. Simply care more. There's only so much room in my heart, Yalk. You know what? I bet you two children became adults as workers. Right. We knew that already. I mean, I guess something we can do in the meantime, in the interim, is we can just make another windmill, right? And we could get that superpower. We'll just future-proof a bit here. We know we're going to need more electricity, so no reason not to make another one. I don't see a cable going directly from this, but that's probably okay. All right, let's continue our road here then. Try and welcome more people while we wait. Oh, that's neat. Oh, buckets. I lost the whole road. Uh, that's an old dried up uh, water thingy. We need rules. Our transition to settled life will bring with it dozens of issues that need to be resolved. Rules and regulations will need will be needed in order to keep everything in order. As our leader, it'll be up to you to make the final decision, okay? I do what we can for our benefits. We almost have our daily lives in order. We have secure housing, food, and eat. We've come to believe that we're now entitled to freedoms, okay? We'll continue to comply with our assigned work. This is like a very weird presentation of information here, right? You should allow us to barter amongst ourselves. Sure. All are free to trade what is rightfully theirs. So plus eight morale to all classes, minus five workforce to all classes. Uh, that's fine.
bridge. I like that a lot, actually. I think that looks really cool. So, somehow I have a minus 20 to morale. Oh, it's because of the storm. That's fine. Uh, we are now capped on leather. Okay. I mean, I guess I can always increase production space on it, right? Where's the civil engineer when you need them? <laughs> Barbarian points to self. What are you gonna, are you gonna sign off on my bridge there, Barbarian? What do you think? Narkur also available? Scale of uh, one to bridge, how'd I do? Legally, I can't. Well, fine. <laughs> That's very funny. Hi, let's see. All right. Needs more canals? Or we're just, we're, we're waiting for the rain. So there you go. You know, we, uh, we built up the earth a little bit here, right? On both sides. So it's, you know, it's got some good supports. Brandon tells me about the dry summer. All right, that's fine. 4.5 out of 10, likely not going to last a long time. Uh-oh. Um, That's awkward. Now, appears to be functional. Now, what is a long time? In your scope of work, what's the expected lifespan on a bridge here? Because, right, I thought, I thought, unlike the Romans, I thought modern engineering was under the assumption that it only has to last like in the realm of decades with the assumption that technology and materials are going to be better so that when you go to repair it, yeah, it's decades, right? Yeah, 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 right? You'll repair it. It'll be cheaper and more efficient next time around. City of Illinois would get very upset if I took a job from a structural engineer. I'll give you a pass this one time, Narkuru, but that's just because we have Barbarian. <laughs> All right, so I can't do anything. I'm just trying to see if there's anything I can do anywhere. I mean, I'm going to make another stockpile just so that, right? Like, if we're making all these resources, we may as well keep them. Let's go like this. I mean, we got time, so let's build up our grid and our infrastructure, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take another stockpile. We're going to slap it down right here. Oh, group of travelers. Yes. Yes. Now, please tell me that there are nine of you. <laughs> I count five, which is good. A lot of North American infrastructure was designed to last like 10 years. And then like 50 years go by and people are wondering why everything is failing. People, things just aren't built like they used to be. Ooh, my water is gone. Why is my water production so bad? Uh, this has, oh, why am I at 20%? Oh, dry summer efficiency. Ooh, minus 80 to water production. Unending preparation. We need proper preparation to sustain our life here. One of the most important lessons in the last 50 years has been that we can't rely on the seasons to behave as we expect. The fickle atmosphere can breed hellish heat waves. Okay. We need to stock up on essential needs, at the very least on food and water. This will help us cope. Have 5,000 water and 1,200 meals. Great. So the meal portion is already great. Uh, what I need is another well. Well, well, well. There we go. If I put this here, and it looks like I don't... 
Correct me if I'm mistaken, it looks like I don't actually need to worry about logistics in this game. Well done, thank you. A group of travelers. Come on. Five more workers. We're getting close. We're getting close to that uh, that number 50, which will allow us to move on in the game. Now, uh, the summer heat is gone, and we're building a new well, so that'll help there. Our food production exceeds our consumption. That's great news. I'm actually going to switch this back to mushroom. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not. <laughs> I lied. It's not as efficient as as the mushrooms. Oops, I got rid of it apparently. But that's okay. Okay, we're netting an extra 40 per day. This game is very brown. It's a uh, dystopian survival city builder. Actually, a lot of the games in this genre do have that brown filter on them, don't they? Not a lot of vibrant colors in this genre. What if I zoom in? Better? What if I made even more wells? <gasps> Four children grew up! Oh my god, we just hit level 50. We just hit 50. This is big. This is big. So... Cycle progress. We just hit cycle three. Roots and branches. Ooh. Merchant has arrived. All right. Uh, give me one second, friends. I have to pee. I'm going to take a very short bio break. And then when we come back, we're going to check out the new tech. All right. One sec. Hello, I return. All right, I don't think this trade is worth it. <clears throat> we have lots of this ourselves. So, uh, no. Goodbye. <clears throat> Wait, can I just decline? All right, this is fine. Time to check out the new cycle of knowledge, right? Wait, select development for details. Uh, hello? Oh, here we go. Um, Nani? Maybe I'm too early. Oh. <laughs> 
We did it. Can I tell them I'm not interested? I guess they just sit here and they'll leave eventually. That's fine. All right, what do we want to learn first? Probably clothing? Vocational training. There's a technical boot camp. That lets us turn craftsmen to specialists. Okay. We've got cultivation. Let's us get farms. <laughs> Grow kale. Now we need technical stuff in order to do that. We need paper. Okay. Uh, surveillance. Uh-oh. Oh, di different kind of surveillance. Literal scouts. Okay, we need to make the vocational training first. Uh, building statics. Let's just start collecting clay and brick. Uh, mine surveying. Oh, coal or weaving. All right, so it looks like the first and most important one we need is actually vocational training. So let's start there. Uh, let's build one more well. Because there seems to be no reason not to, right? Oh, let's go. Can I get four here? Just three. All right, let's just get the three. And this is going to be great. This well, we're going to say, is for... Wait, is this one dry? This well will be for uh, travelers, right? People who are on the road. <gasps> Speaking of which, another group of travelers. I accept them all. Six more workers. Great news. Now, we're actually a little bit short on housing currently. So let's build one more. Chief, we know we're no place to make excessive demands, but this is a fundamental issue. Health is deteriorating. All right. Please get regular health up for 30 days. Increase worker health to above 40. What is my health currently at? My health is at... Maybe I don't understand what that graph means. It looks like everybody is healthy. Right? But 56 is also how many people I have. So I don't know if that is I have 56 healthy people or if I'm already winning. Is it just a coincidence that my health is the same number as my population? Is my health at 2? Because if it's at 2 and I need to get it over 40, I've made a mistake, right? Click on my city, there's a bar for health. My health is at 2. Well, that's... Uh... <laughs> Uh-oh. No, I think you're all right. I think we're, uh, yeah, kind of a spooky spot here. We've reached, wait, increase worker health to above 40. Hey, okay, so I did pass that. I'm just going to accept that I'm very good at this game. Bigger portions. Our foundations are strong enough to let our call ourselves a permanent settlement. We realize it's too early to wish for prosperity yet, since we know everything can fall apart. However, can we have a little bit more food? New regulation increases ration sizes. Ration sizes per capita increased by 30%. You know what? Sure. We got lots of food. I don't know what that quest was trying to tell us, if I'm perfectly honest. But we got a Chivo, and that's fine. And uh, we're starting to get more rain. And I don't know if rain does anything specifically for well water. Oh, cool. We got the technical boot camp done, though. So let's build that right away. Stone, lumber, iron ingots. Educates workers. Sure. Uh, also requires a bunch of science. So let's put this over here.
produce 400 paper. Our days of forgetting are over, I accept. Oh, does our lumber mill make... <gasps> Man, this poor lumber yard. Are you kidding me? Two workers died because our building, our lumber mill, which has been... Our lumber mill is cursed, y'all. A sad day for us all. We're no strangers to death. Lennon Preston died in the catastrophe. Oh my God. You know what? Obviously that location is cursed. A building or land plot being cursed would be a great mechanic in this sort of game. That's very funny. So we're looking at that graph before. That was two unhealthy workers. But that doesn't make sense either. Like, look at it. It says healthy 54, barely healthy 0, sick 0. And then we have a bunch of positive and negative modifiers with an ultimate health score of 3. So I think we all read that right. And the game was just asking us for something different. Wow, lightning strike results in minus 15 morale for everybody. Brutal. Yeah, so maybe, I don't know if they wanted us to have 40 healthy workers or what, but whatever they asked for and whatever we delivered, obviously it worked, but I don't, it doesn't make sense to me, you know? 54 healthy, two zapped. Wow. Too soon. All right. So we are stockpiling 150 water per day. Right. So can I get multiple people? No. I would need a second lumber yard if I wanted to start making water. All right. We're going back to the cursed location. message from the community. If we want to build a future in this nameless land and make it last, we need more people. Let's set an aim for a hundred people within the next four years. Yes, I accept. Actually, you know what? Let's set this to paper production. Am I making both? No, I only make one or the other. Okay. A message from the community. This location is obviously cursed. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's train up. Ooh, God. Let's train up two craftsmen. It's going to cost us 400 paper. All right, our leather is capping, but but I am hopeful that we can get clothing going soon, right? And that would be down here. Requires building statics first. Oh, never mind. Let's uh let's start doubling a bunch of these. So luckily we don't have to store paper. Paper is just a random a random statistic that just exists. And that's good to know. Simple meal, let's say we can store 5,000. And let's say we can store 10,000 water. Ah, 10,000 seems excessive. 8,000 water. Are both lumber mills making paper? Yes, I don't have any demand for lumber, so I don't actually care that much.
chief. We've accumulated a massive pool of knowledge, but it remains largely undirected and unrealized. We need to train individuals, okay? How many do you want? Get a classman. Yes. New world calls for training people. Sure. So craftsman training time and resources requirements halved. Oh, great. Permanent effect acceleration. That's incredible. Crafts worker to craftsman training success rate is increased. 1.8 times more power tool. Okay. So I get more craftsmen, but they are less efficient. Increased chance of accidents or... Permanent effects in test of... Oh, this is very cool. Craftsmen will be given more training, rigorous training regimen, and extra time will be allocated when necessary. More safely, more slowly. Ah, uh, that's great. Minus eight works for us for the craftsmen. Okay, so they work slower, but they work more efficiently. But there are less accidents. I'm going to go with this one. All right, uh, we are no longer producing mushrooms. You may get us fish. Do you want to be risky? No, I am very risk adverse. Oh my goodness. Chat. Chat, they did it again. Build a technical boot camp. I... That's so frustrating. Okay, I guess I'll destroy it and build it again. No, they want me to build it. So, I will. <laughs> ah... Feels like bad game design. This is an early access tutorial. You know? Hey, the X. Thank you for seven months, friend. It's not good design. Oh, I know. I bet this is the sort of thing that'll get polished out. I bet you. All right. End of year highlights. Nice rainfall resulted in an 84% replenishment of resources. Good. Good. Population grew by 17. We had nine deaths. Pardon me. Nine births, two deaths, netting 17 people. The number of destructive accidents was one. And we lost two people as a result. That's too bad. We're trucking right along. Now, for resources, the pit. Where, can I get clay anywhere? It looks like, unlike in, um, unlike in Farthest Frontier, it looks like clay isn't a resource. Oh, you know what we want to do? We want to find our mining lair, probably. There we go. So does that make it more effective? Or do you think that's going to be the basic mine? That's probably for the mine. The pit just works wherever. Okay. So let's get that out of town a little bit here, shall we? Let's take this road. All the way out to all the way out to the old building here, which I think is kind of cool. Shoot. Let's build the the clay pit all the way out here. Uh, or not. Okay. All right. I stand corrected. <laughs> it looks like it has to be on this gray terrain. We'll put it by the well. Doesn't feel like I'm particularly resource limited. Am I wrong? Oh, we're doing okay. I mean, keep in mind, I also play a lot of this game. A lot of this genre. So, 
And we're also in the tutorial. There's a free play mode, which might be a lot more challenging. All right, we've done it. We've completed the objective. Let's start training two craftspeople. Let's start training none craftspeople. Are we not stockpiling food like you want to? I mean, we're, we are operating at a deficit currently. But that could be because of efficiency. I don't know. All right, we've got access to the tailor now. Okay, those are going way up, which is great. Uh, let's find out what it takes to make clothing. So, oh, we're at a huge electrical deficit. Give me a second here, please. Yeah, both of these numbers are going up now. I think you can even see the wind hitting that area, which is kind of cool. There we go. Now we are profiting. Oh, I'm not actually. Ooh. Oh, look at that. That to me looks like an infinite source of stone. So that when we get rid of the surface stone. Okay, we have stockpiled our water, which is awesome. Gives us a little happy boosty there for a second. Now, uh, we can also build a kiln where we can start to turn brick Pardon me, where we can start turning um, clay into brick. So let's put this here. And then maybe we need sand by the water. I couldn't build stuff over there though. So that's interesting to me. So I can build one over here as well. Oh, wow. This map goes on forever. Huh. Drilling lair. Okay. So we got some pink over here, whatever that is. Uh, we've got the mining lair. Consumes 290 electricity. Okay. So that pit, that is the cost. Okay. Let's future proof a bit here. And then the next thing I need to do is I actually need to switch this over to wooden planks. Is there an exploration expansion mechanic? Is it worth looking further afield for things? I don't know. It's a very good question. I think the next thing we do want, though, is we want to get some clothing for people, right? Because they're complaining that my clothing supply is low. It's under utilities? No. Why can't I find this? Taylor. There we are. Oh, I need bricks first. Well, that makes sense. It's a good thing I started working on this. One stone, four clay gives me bricks, okay? How's my clay production? 19 per day. We'll see. It'll, it'll update shortly. Now, I didn't actually start training anybody here. Let's get two craftsmen. Let's see what happens. Has a very pure name for this genre. The new cycle is it's very on the nose for sure. 
So we got weaving. We can do mine surveying shortly. We can also do some cultivation. I mean, we need to we need to unlock it regardless. So let's grab that. Oh, divided layers. Oh, okay. So sand is actually separate from clay. So it wasn't that I just didn't know where to find it. Confusing with the cycle. I believe the cycle is no more. That was the first person shooter, right? I think that game shut down. So unfortunately, we don't have to worry about it anymore. Ah! I was just thinking to myself, hey, I can't see all of my resources. And then so I clicked a button up at the top and now I can see everything. Well, it still doesn't show me my bricks. Which is an important resource. First time craftsman appears in your community. Okay. So where can I put a craftsman? Two trainees are ready. Time to get crafty. So I can't add them. Now, what if I got rid of this and I did this? Oh, interesting. Okay, so I don't have buildings specifically for craftsmen yet. That's fine. That's fine. All right, so let's build our tailor right here. Right across from the office and see what happens. Maybe they need to be tier two, which you can't upgrade yet. It seems odd, though, that the first thing you have to do in this tier is get the ability to get craftsmen. And then I don't actually have anywhere where craftsmen can work. And furthermore, craftsmen actually take away from my active labor. So it's like kind of bad that they don't do anything. But we'll see, right? We're learning together. So an important thing to note when you start a game like this is you're going to make mistakes and that's totally okay. All right. Start. Hey, there we go. So if I use one craftsman, can I also use another person? I can. So give me a second here. Interesting. So this is the first building we've seen that actually uses a hybrid approach of employees. So it needs a craftsman, but it, it, it functions without a craftsman, but it needs a worker regardless, which is kind of neat. One craftsman gives us 40 workforce. One worker only gives us 11. Yeah, they are they are skilled labor. So they do... I mean, mind you, our workers only work in at 75%. So normally a worker would give us 15. Craftsman gives us 40. You're almost in step with the game. You built a mine and then it told you to build its own mine. All right, I will hold off on the mine then. I'll learn from your mistake. Okay, we are completely out of mushrooms, which is a little bit scary. Let's start collecting those. I wasn't paying attention. There is none mushroom there, but we're bringing in lots of meat. The merchant has arrived. What do you have for sale today? So they could sell me bronze. Oh, and they'll buy paper. That's kind of cool. So if I wanted all of your bronze for reasons that we'll learn in the future, let's go with 30 because that's a lot. That means I'd have to give you literal hundreds of meat. All 
Does that feel worth? I think it does, actually. So their barter value appears to be going down. Interesting. The more they want of something, the less they'll the less of it they'll accept. I guess they don't want to carry 400 kilos of raw meat home or something like that. Supply and demand, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fine. I'll take all their copper. I'll give them some paper and some raw meat. Later. Now, I still can't upgrade, but we are getting closer, right? We need bricks, glass, and wire. Okay. Okay, we can now scout. I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to think for myself anymore, chat. Okay, let's say I want more stone and I want more log. So let's double stone to a thousand. Let's go up to 3,000 here. Time for a gigantic bronze statue in the middle of town. A monument to myself. Oh, you shouldn't have. <clears throat> Ooh, a group of travelers. The more our settlement grows, the more tension we get. A group of wanderers, each less fortunate than us, awaits. Yeah, nine new people? Incredible. So, I think that means I need another house. Sure do. Monument to chair. When was the last time chair did anything useful for you? It's all about me. All right, chat. Chair never leaves us. That's fair. Chair supports you daily. Oh, man. I feel like I'm getting the, uh, the short end of the stick here with my chair. All right, so we're now making clothing. So what is that doing for our morale? Distribution of clothing is three per day. I'm making 13 per day. So let's let's get up into that extra, that regular distribution. My morale is getting up there. To be fair, chair doesn't give you canal. It's true. It's true to think of. Also, I wanted to see if there's water flowing through here yet. No, no. No water. How are we doing down in the clay mines? They're digging an excellent hole. All right. So surveillance is done. Let's do mine surveying. Now, I'm really curious about what the surveillance building does. Scouts Guild. Sends scouts to explore our surroundings and exploit opportunities. Sure. Ooh. It looks like this. You know what? I bet you this will look great. Right next to the, uh, right next to the old lighthouse, right? That makes sense to me. James here to dig these pits. He's slacking, Narkuru. I didn't see him dig a single hole today. SMH my entire H. You think you know a guy? We are out of mushrooms because it is now winter time. 
You know what? We're going to cool it on the mushrooms for a bit here. And we're going to make fish soup. Wait, fish soup is very inefficient. We'll get there. Okay, we're capping on water, which is great. All right, what is this? Create a scout team. Idol at camp name. <laughs> okay. What does the scout team do? Yeah, I created it for free, but I have no idea what it does. How does one SMH their entire H aggressively? Oh, Mining 101. We know enough to be able to build our first mining facilities. In order to access reach rich resources under the surface, we need to position these facilities carefully and beginning and begin digging mine shafts to reach whatever they can reach below. Only once these shafts have been dug can we say for certain what minerals we can find in the area and how much. Ore veins are found on mountain slopes or in rocky areas. After selecting a mine building, you can view the potential thing. Okay. Build a basic mine. Aha! Ooh. Three there, we don't know. I wonder if that's what the scouts are good for. Oh, interesting. I've got a little scout icon in the bottom left now. All right, let's see if I can get four somewhere. Uh, no, I can only reach three if I go all the way into that corner. What about this mountain? There we go. If I build it here. If I build it here. Then I reach everything. Where's my road? Oh, my road's right over there. Seems like a very inefficient way to prospect for stuff. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, wow. So welcome to the world map. I explore. I explore. Uh, interesting. How do I go back? All right. So we are in a very chilly winter all of a sudden. And I'm also starting to get low on power once again. And I also just got a steam Chivo, apparently. Build a mine! Hold on. Is that what I just got? Get a population of 70, okay. Year four is over. Here are some highlights. We got 11 new people. Ration production was down. That's probably because of mushrooms. But our water balance is up tremendously. Feels like Frostpunk? No. Maybe aesthetically they look a little similar. These are totally different games. So this camp is not very productive, but that's okay. Like it has winter, which seems to be, I think the only overlap I'd say yeah, this is probably closest to Farthest Frontier. A little. Maybe a little bit of, uh, I mean, Timberborn is so cute that people don't often associate it with it. But like, I think Timberborn is more brutal in this game so far in terms of, <laughs> of deaths. <laughs> 
All right, so we've got this tailor and they are using leather, which is awesome. So let's get more clothing into here because I'm capping on leather, right? The exploration map. Well, that's fair. There was another um, sort of like, wait, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I need another house. There's another game that we played that had sort of this style of, um, of whatever. Great English Surge. What was that one called? It was a nuclear apocalypse one. Yeah, I, apparently there's a huge Timberborn update literally today as well. So <laughs> there might be some more Timberborn coming up soon, friends. More beaver game, which I know this community loves. Was it? I mean, we streamed it. Maybe I'm thinking Surviving the Aftermath. It had a lot of scouting. Could have also been end zone for sure. Yeah. All right. So we have our mine now. What do we have? We have access to iron, copper, and coal. So. Not enough resources. What does that mean? Oh, zero available. Uh, oh. Oh. Interesting. All right, Scout has arrived in the valley. A large area that looks empty and untouched, except for a few ruins of buildings from long ago. Nothing to see. The few woods may harbor small prey, judging by the weedy ground. Possible things in the region. Log, meat, water. Build a watchtower here. So what does that do? What? What? Daily operating expenses. What? We've arrived in the highlands. Vast plains of grass and rocky ground leading to steep slopes. With a hint of mountain range, log, iron, meat, water. It's a shame to have such resources nearby. Wow. Make new outposts that give you specific resources? Yeah, looks like you can just do external camps and, um, yeah. Settled in a regional for the first time. The watchtower has been completed. Sorry, map orientation was this way. So this watchtower is done in the valley. And that costs us two workers, and I don't know what this is. Potentially some kind of supply. Productivity 40. So what does it what does it bring us? It analyzes the region for us. Wild. Region effects. Yeah, okay. Huh! I was not expecting that. Very neat. Fresh tracks. And maybe home to large herds of several species, including big game. Or it might be a migration route. Definitely a good spot for hunting. Meat will make us resilient. Go to the region center and start construction of a relevant structure if you have enough resources. The resources in this area are not abundant enough for us to produce anything. We should try our luck elsewhere. Huh. So that's the barren province. She found meat there. So if we go to the highlands now... I can make a hunter's cabin. It just gives us free food. Required development expansion. Oh. So we don't have access to expansion. Let's take a look. 
So that's cycle number four. Where would, uh, expansion is down here in cycle number four. All right. To get to cycle number four, what do we need? Uh, we need a population of 90. Amazing. Well, this is very cool, everybody. Okay, it looks like I need one more craftsperson. So let's do that. So it looks like the scouts are still finding the resources for us, but that's okay. All right, let's see if there's another good, good place for wind power. There is right here. Just preemptively build a little bit here. Restructuring. Signs of life. Our settlement has begun to resemble a village. We're not a group of wanderers looking to escape by anymore. Though it feels as though our new way of living means working constantly. New working schedule. One day off for every nine days. Get more knowledge. Get more morale, but lower workforce. Yes, that's fine. Work smarter, not harder. And the trade-off here, the hope at the very least, is that the morale will offset the production cost. Barren land. Barren land. I'm actually really enjoying this. Our training is done. Great news. So if we go up here, what have we found? We found copper. I don't have enough stone for that. We found copper. We found iron. And we found coal. Oh, it sat idle. That's so frustrating. So it looks like we need... Okay. Wait, does that mean I can only mine one or the other? So finding multiples of this. Oh, very interesting. Okay. So it turns out having one mine cover multiple nodes isn't actually good. <laughs> What's up, Inquisitor Gaia? I just realized that all the workers kind of look like Matt from Loading Ready Run. Goat Prince. The red hair. The wavy hair. A little bit of a little bit of beard might give you some flexibility to switch between yeah but it doesn't harvest all of them so for example the gathering posts you can assign more people to get, grab all of them right similar to the field camp just cap one resource and switch that's fair potential water source let's start digging So that is in this valley. So this one has the ability to get us water and meat, but we don't have expansion yet. So we're just kind of we're just kind of scouting now and that's okay. Another potential water source. Great. So we go to a province and it gives you all sorts of details. That's kind of cool. I like that. I don't think I can afford to stretch out too much in multiple directions. Ooh, our storage is almost full again. That's okay. Yeah, it definitely looks like this game doesn't have logistics to worry about. Which means I can just do stuff like... Sorry, give me a second here. Like, just put stockpiles way out here, right? Dang. There we go. What's up, Insane Cat? Good to see you. 
If you right click on a resource at the top bar, you can select what you want to see for the resource. Sorry, what do you mean? You right click. Oh, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, it actually shows you it in the slot. That's neat. All right, scouts. Coal rich land. All right, so let's send scout number one over here. And then when scouts number two is done, we'll go that way. And I don't think I have the labor to set up camps everywhere. We're just like a little bit shy on people right now. Oh, I'm capping on clay, huh? Analyze that deposit. Oh, uh, the merchant is back. Hello. This time you come bearing food and you want us to give you tools? No, thank you. I wonder if later on in the game we go back to like a, a system of currency, legal tender or something like that. Huge mineral deposit. Huge mineral deposit. So if we click here. Explored. So we have the water there. It says it's hidden. Hmm. That's weird. It still says it's hidden, and I don't know why that is. Maybe if I go back here and click on it again, it'll tell me. So what am I getting from this so far? I guess I'm doing this for scouting, but that's about it, eh? Analyze region. Okay. Maybe you have to build a watchtower to get further info in the area. I mean, I have. All those areas already have watchtowers. That's what that building is, right? So that little flag watchtower means it's built. That's the first thing I did. Now, I can't build these yet because I'm missing the technology. So the little the little extra things that we're doing in both uh, requires tier 5 tech, which we just don't have yet. But yeah, we've got the flag set up and we're searching. But uh, I don't know what the next steps to that are. Yeah, they have been both flagged and searched, but that's fine. No outside threat yet? Not that we've discovered, but that doesn't mean it's not coming. All right, we built more storage. Let's bump up our meat a bit here to 3,500. Uh, my food is absolutely trending in the wrong direction. So let's get back to mushrooms. Uh, good thing I noticed. Start cooking that meat. Our clothing is capped. Our leather is capped. Let's increase this to 1,500. And let's increase our leather to 3,000. I'll just build more storage, right? Our iron ore could probably go higher. I believe we're at an equilibrium, but let's get it up to 2K. This game in early access. Early access officially started this morning. This game has been out for... Uh, two hours and 45 minutes. And I've been live for two hours and 48 minutes. All right. So we built scouts. The scouting's interesting. We've got a mine going. Oh, I should be smelting. Use a kiln to smelt, right? No. Use a smith to smelt. <gasps> I could be making wire. Hold on. How do I make wire? Uh, 
Copper, tin, okay, production. So the kiln can make us brick or glass or cement, but glass needs sand, which we don't have. Uh, the smith can make basic tools and wires. So why can't it make the wire yet? Insulated furnaces requires tier five. Wait, no, tier four. And wire is also under tier four. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we'll get there shortly. I just don't know how to do it yet. So the fact that we're collecting copper is fine. We're stockpiling it for when we're going to start making wires. Okay. Uh, I suppose the next thing we want to do then is let's diversify our food and get into our first farm. Right? The kale yard. Grows crops to ensure constant production of food. Produces raw food. There, there we go. There we go. So this is the best one. Everybody loves kale. I don't know if that's true. You know who doesn't love kale? Joe Kim. I don't know what kale ever did to him. But I think his exact words were like, what is it with white people and their love of kale? He's like, it's gross. You hate kale? Not much of a fan to BH. It's super gross. So Joe makes a really good kale salad. But one of the things that she does to make the kale salad delicious is you got to crush it, right? Like kale is very chewy. But if you, if you like... Throw some oil and salt on it and then do this, like break it up, then it's better. Is it weird that I have no strong feelings about kale? No, it's fine. It's like Brussels sprouts, right? Some people are ambivalent. Some people like it. Some people hate it. Kale kimchi. Weird. It's been pre-chewed with your hands. I mean, not that soft, Rocket John. Not that soft. It's like, uh, it's like the... Like, you wouldn't call tenderized meat pre-chewed, right? Right? You just don't like the flavor of kale? That's fair. All right, give me one second here. I need to refill my water. Yo, what up? All right, let's keep going. All right, is everybody happy? Tell me about yourselves. Oh my God, our morale is so nice right now. Are you kidding me? Look at that. Beautiful. Our uh, food production's a little spooky though. So I need to actually bump this down to regular so we don't die. We're crushing our water, though. Well, now nah, our water's fine. Basic tool is at the extra level. That's fine. Our clothing is... We're fine for clothing. Okay, good. I mean, actually, our clothing is so high above. Let's give people extra clothing, shall we? 15 per day? Dang. Everyone's going to be so warm. Now, oh, they have their own morale. Well, so I don't have special clothes or special tool available for them yet either. One of them is sick. No, our poor sickly craftsman. I didn't realize that. That's terrible news.
in before everybody gets heat stroke from too many clothes. That'd be terrible news. Now, I'm looking at this inpatient rest leave. For three days, patients are allowed to rest. So this gives me plus 20 to health and the probability of dying from a severe illness is decreased. Lasts for eight days. I think this is fine. Do we have a middle class now that we treat differently? I mean, I would like to not think of this as a class system and think, think of this as a job system where different jobs get better food. <laughs> yes. Totally different. Premium grade copium. <laughs> Thanks, Rocket John. Pay no attention to the Leviathan overseeing society. Oh, please. It's more of an invisible hand than a Leviathan. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, my kale yard is complete. It's not a very big kale yard, is it? All right. Do we want herbs or spices? Produces vegetables. I bet you we need herbs later on for medicine. But for now, uh, turning water into more food seems like a great idea. You know what? Honestly, we might just need another kitchen here. As the leader, do I have the hardest job and thus need the best food? I mean, I wouldn't have said that myself, but since you put it that way, I, I, I guess I'll begrudgingly accept that burden. You know what? Hold on. What's the radii here? I can get one more house in there. Can I get a road in between these? Did I leave enough room for this? Sure didn't, eh? Good talk, Serge. Where do I go for these two new soup kitchens? I think maybe right across the road. All right, let's put that down. Uh, we no longer harvest the mushrooms because it's winter. And then I think this camp might need to move somewhere. I mean, they're bringing me in the beef. They're bringing the beef. And anybody who brings the beef is all right in my books, you know? I do like the freeform filling, but I wish the area around all the buildings wasn't only square or rectangle. Well, there is a grid system. So if you have a grid system, you basically want to respect the grid, right? Like you want it to be square. So it's tough, right? Reminds you, you need to replay Frostpunk. Frostpunk 2 is coming soon. If you want to feel bad about yourself. <laughs> so it looks like mushroom soup is like the best soup we can do. Just when it comes to food efficiency. All right, we're starting to run a little bit low on water. That's okay. Joke's on you. You already feel... <laughs> about yourself. Ah, <laughs> uh, you'd love Frostpunk then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard there's a brand new trailer that just came out for sure. How are we doing over here? Oh, there's only 230 more iron available. All right. 600 more rock. 500 more wood. Oh, hey. Remember how we were talking about the trees? Would you look at that? 
Look at that sphere. And look how many trees are left. Very interesting. Let's get uh, let's get this meat a frying, you know. Frostbunk two is a day one play for you. After this war of mine, I'm all in on anything that studio ever makes for sure. Actually, for people who like um, sad games, <laughs> how many of you are playing? Oh, I, I talked about this the other day. I always forget the name. It's the train game. It's Frostpunk, but you're on a train. It's set in like the World War. And you're trying to make your way home. Highly recommend that. Again, if you want to be sad playing a video game. Is it literally called The Last Train? Last Train Home or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, here's a question. This building has been operational for three days. Minus 100%. Okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to micro a little bit. We're going to leave one person on it just to keep it operational. Hey, we found the shoreline. Uncharted territory. Log, iron, meat, water. Coastal abundance. So I don't have the people to build another tower here. Well, I guess I can build it and just not work it, right? And then we can scout the other stuff here. We are resource rich. We are not people rich. Oh no! Brandon Sutton died of illness. That sucks. And when I clicked on their name, it clicked on iron. I believe they were one of our, yes, they were. They were one of our, um, whatchamadoodles, one of our craftspeople. Can we get some Fs in chat for Brandon Sutton? Sorry, Brandon. We have a knowledge deficit. Very upsetty. People are resources. That's why we have HR. Wow. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> All right. Are we trending upwards for food now? We are. Good. Turns out Craftsman is a, a hard gig. Well, I didn't know that they didn't have their own basic stats, so I wasn't feeding them. <laughs> and now I feel very bad about it, okay? Well, I didn't starve them to death. They were a little bit hungry, and then they got a cold, and then they died. Please. Please. They didn't starve. So an interesting thing that you can't do in this game is I haven't found the ability to move the building. Shoreline established. Still don't know what these scouts are doing. That's all right. Ooh, my scouts have arrived at the forest. Sorry, I couldn't actually see my mouse because of the snow. Log, meat, water. How's the class doing? Oh, we're getting there. Good, good, good.
All right, we need 13 more people and then we will hit our next tier, which is great. Ooh, huge mineral deposit. Go to the region center and start constructing relevant structures to get that resource. So down here, similarly, this was also a huge resource thing, right? And I guess we don't know what it is yet. Okay, that's fine, I guess. So it does look like, originally when I built scouts, I thought I might be able to do something like this. Options for these runes. So maybe that's something we just get to do later on, but I'm curious about that. I'm also curious, we're playing, technically we're playing the campaign and we're at the tutorial, but I don't see like mission specific goals for this map, if that makes sense, other than the, the uh, tutorial introduction, right? So I'm curious about that. What does it mean? You know? All right. Welcome, friend. Let's get you into the mines. Wait, no. Not in the mines. Let's get you into the textiles. There we go. Uh, the forest has been established, which is here. All right, let's let winter go by here. Speed up the game a little bit. So we're stockpiling, that's all good. I don't really think there's anything else we can build right now. I guess I could try and make a little bit more power. I mean, the other thing I could do, I could just build power further away, right? Yeah, like out here. Because it doesn't look to me like you actually have to send workers out there. Oops. Or connected via power lines. Possible hunting ground. All right. Oh, look at these roads, though. Year five. Survive to year five. I don't know where these people are going, but I want to give them the way to do it, right? There. Some of these years highlights. Two people died from disease. Two people died from disease. We had zero people join us, but 12 births, netting in 11 new people. I didn't know we had two deaths. 85% replenishment of resources. That's okay, I guess. I guess that does show that we are going to have to start leaning increasingly on external resources for stuff. And that's fine to know. Yeah, there's there's some simple things in this game, which is kind of neat. Uh, one, it I mean, at least as far as I can tell, there's no logistics. I don't see people who are needed to carry stuff from point A to point B, right? Uh, another thing that I've noticed is it doesn't really matter where your where your power is. It just adds to our power grid without needing like power poles to carry it. You do, need, you do need roads, pardon me, in order to carry power to your structures, but not from your power generators out. Any other observations from you, chat? Potential water. You know what this needs? It feels like it needs a Stellaris-esque 
take me there for the quick time events, you know? You've observed a lack of canal. I do have a bridge over a water runoff, which is at least canal adjacent, right? Like you could picture how water would run through here. So I would like bonus points from that, Gunner. You observe that the cookies you just ate are delicious. Did you bring enough for everybody in chat? <gasps> What's this? A log source. Although the soil and surface don't seem to yield anything, the trees can be made use of. Cool. Hey, what's up, Andre? Thank you so much for the 21, friend. I hope you are well. Oh, no. A fire. Oh, I got good news. I got good news. For once, it's not the cursed lumber yard. Oh, no. It spread. It's two kitchens this time. Oh, good. Oh, good. My soup. This is terrible news. It's adjacent to the cursed lumber yard. Oh, no. Were the kitchens built out of wood from the cursed lumber yard? You know what? You're not wrong. They were. <gasps> Gasp. Soup is hot. <laughs> wow. Wait, is it savable? One worker died? Oh, that's terrible news. I need all my workers. Well, you know what? This does give me an opportunity to move the soup kitchens. Hey, hey, we, we saved it. That's great news. This is going to be a soup kitchen alley over here. Oh, can I destroy roads? Oh my God, I can't. Thank goodness. Because that road is crooked. Oh, I'm out of stone. Very interesting. We are getting stone poor. After the fire, we're at minus 25. That's too bad. Have I been able to put out a fire? I mean, we saved that one, right? Not every single time there's been a fire has it resulted in complete destruction of everything. Just close. Imagine a cook who messed things up so bad they burnt down both of the kitchens. I mean, in, in, in their defense, we do have three kitchens, but yes. My consumption is up to 769. Can somebody please explain to me? Maybe that's the uh, firefighting consumption. Do you think maybe there was like some type of kitchen sabotage that happened? One of the kitchens was like, ah, we can't compete with them. Quick, when they're not looking, let's burn them down. But then accidentally, like, the fire spread. You know what? I'm not actually doing anything with these fish yet. We're stockpiling them, but we're not cooking them. So, let's start asking ourselves, where is our next source of resources going to be? Okay. 
can't build a road here. Why not? Interesting. Is it because we're too high now? I don't I don't know why I can't build a road there. Have my wells dried out? No, I think I think that spike in consumption was just because of the fire. Oh, it's because I'm out of stone. Thank you. Yes. So one of the things that I can do is I can switch this to stone production for a little bit. And we are sitting on 700 clay, so that's possibly fine. Should we build a second mine? The issue I'm having right now is labor. This is going to have up to 10 people in it, but like who's going to work it, right? So we'll get there. I mean, eventually this is going to run out of resources. Oh, for example, we have no iron available and yet I still had people mining that iron. And we'll be out of stone and stuff soon. So let's go up to here. How much copper do I have? I'm sitting on 500 copper with no use for it. Let's switch this over to iron. Wow. The highlands have everything. What's scout number two doing? Oh, they're heading out to the seaside. Okay. Hey, 59 months in a prime sub. Thank you so much, Shivam. How are you, friend? God, so many months. That number is going up. All right. Uh, Phoebe died from a catastrophe, but we did get six new kids. Thank you for coffee, my love. Oh, wait, never mind. Four became adults and two became kids. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to build that second mine now because that's a great idea. Uh, so we want another pit and I'm going to put that one right here. Kind of in the same neighborhood, right? And I like that it's at the crossroads and it's near the well. Hi, bud bud. People are still sad about that fire. And you know what? That's fair. That is fair. It costs 125 stone? What? Oh, and the kiln takes it as well. All right, let's stop it with the kiln. Let's keep one person in there just so the building doesn't do anything. And let's get all in on gathering stone. Dang. Zero wood available. You know what? Let's just get rid of this building entirely. Because I didn't realize how little it was doing. Now, uh, we want a field camp. Is there a place where I can get some stone? Yes. So if I put this, let's say, here about. I can get stone and some wood. A group of travelers has appeared. More friends. That looks to be... Ooh, six more people. This is excellent news. We can put them to work in the mines. Things were going so well. Hey, slow down. I didn't say anything about children in the mines. I just said the new people. Please. Don't try and lies and slander me. Actually, something I should do. Now that I see... I don't have any stone for houses. I was going to say, now that I see I got more people showing up, I should... Uh, should get to work trying to get uh, a house ready for them. All right, 
Stone cutters. You know what? Let's chop these trees as well while we're here. If I send the children to the mines, who will clean my chimneys? Great question. Next question. <laughs> Other smaller children. <laughs> ah, see, I'm glad. I'm glad this community can come together to answer those really challenging questions like that. You know. I personally don't think I would have ever thought of other smaller children. All right, how's our morale doing here? We're looking good. Hello, welcome. Oh, you're going to love it here. We'll get you a house eventually. All right. A group of strangers has arrived. Yes, get on in. Oh, plus nine. Oh, 90 is a great number because 90 gets us into the, uh, the next tier, the next cycle, if you will. Now, as soon as this is built, we can get all in on stone production. New cycle moving forward. Amazing. Farm, residence, storehouse, guardhouse, smelter, maintenance building, water pump. Ooh, a water pump. So let's take a look at this new technology tree right away. So expansion is one of the things that we need for the um, forts that we've been making. But let's take a look at everything here. So divided layers. We need stable roots first. A professional construction team providing regular building maintenance and repair services. <gasps> Maybe that keeps our stuff from burning down. Beneath that, we have insulated furnaces. That lets us start doing something with copper and bronze. Bronze is an alloy between tin and copper, right? We're not mining for tin. There's mining for tin right there. Great. All right, well, obviously we need to start with stable roots. So uh, DM, I do that. All right, let's get our stone up to about 300 and then we'll switch back over to clay. Sand is locked. All right. Huge mineral deposit, that's exciting. So scout number one was way up here. Presumably that's what you found. There we go. Get that road down. 92, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. There should be two people in one of these somewhere. Nope. I am shy, one house. These should all be in the range of that. Great. Got to go to tin if you want tin land. That's fair. Oh, jeez. Gunner. Got gunner. Gunner, we need to talk. All right. Rising upkeep demands. We've come a long way as a community. Our need for different infrastructure for <laughs> our need for different infrastructures for diversified needs and production chains is increasing rapidly. Our settlement needs permanent solutions that will support advanced construction methods. In addition, advanced structures will need regular maintenance. 
build a maintenance building and assign a workforce to manage the priority of construction activities throughout the city. Oh, track the resources to be spent on maintenance and determine levels of upkeep. Okay. Let's get started. So utilities level two, we don't have glass. Oh, now we don't have glass, so we can't build it yet. So we should get divided layers. It gets me sand and glass. <gasps> What's this? Ooh, the sandstorm. Our trees are getting blown over. Hold on a second here. We're all seeing quests. Alternative companions. Animals were close friends to our ancestors. <gasps> Can we get a dog? In the first moments of our civilization's end, they were the first to be abandoned. And after a while, they started to be used for meat. The hunter-prey relationship, which lasted for half a century, can now change. We have enough resources, and our children are growing up in a world where sharing is once again an option. So our welfare tracks stray cats and dogs to our settlement. A dog and a cat for every house. So rations needed increases by 20%, but plus seven to morale and less of a chance of pests. Incredible. Love this. Is there a pet the dog button? Not that I see. It's interesting that the sandstorm has like an electricity thing on it, you know? The storm's pretty intense. The seaside, uncharted territory, water and lots of ores. It's very exciting. That's down here, I believe. Static electricity and sand makes a bunch of sense. You know what doesn't make a bunch of sense is why this building isn't attached to the road. I feel like I'm going to have to destroy this building and rebuild it. There. I probably should have waited because now I have unhoused people. All right, we got lots of stone now. So let's get this back. Let's get this back to clay. And then clay can get us back into brick. Ooh, a guest. Hi, I'm Carla. Excuse my haste, but I've come a long way and you're the only group of people I've come across. I need your help. I'm a member of a village of 20 people and our wells are out. We couldn't find a permanent solution in our vicinity with our situation worsening day by day. All right. Uh, yeah, come stay a while and listen. We have no choice but to leave our home, but we have neither the strength nor the resources to build a settlement from scratch. If you would have us, we'd love to join. Yes. Provide them supplies for the journey. We're going to have 20 new people showing up soon. That's amazing. Twenty means we need to build two additional houses. Ready to barter. What do you got? Ready to barter. Ready. Ready to barter. You don't have anything of value for me. So goodbye. <laughs> I think that's tough but fair, right? Have I finished researching sand yet? No, we're still doing that. I know a game where you can pet a dog and an owl bear at the same time, and you've been keeping that a secret from us, barbarian. Terrifying. Let's start digging. That's not true. 
You need 35 tools. It's, uh, I actually have 300. What it's waiting for though is production. And our production efficiency right now is terrible because of the storm. So I think we have to wait for this anyways, right? Like it's not, it's not like it takes it from there. I don't think if I suddenly buy, I mean, let's test it, right? Let's test. Why not? Why not? Let's test buying 35 tools. I only need like 30 and we're rich, right? Let's, let's give them, they may have meat. So does buying the 35 tools work? Oh, it did. You know what? You know what? Who was that? Was that Chrono? Interesting. I didn't think that was going to work. It's kind of weird that they didn't take it from our stockpile, if I'm honest. Can I click on the quest to do that? No, apparently not. Was Baldur's Gate? That that was the people being like, I can't believe you didn't know it was Baldur's Gate. Yes, I know it was Baldur's Gate. It is a little sad. It's just like I'm sitting on 300 tools. But no, the new people, they require brand new artisanal tools. <laughs> These 300 tools that we've been have sitting in a, in a shack somewhere. No, they aren't good enough. No, 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 no. And I respect that, you know? All right, give me a second. I just finished a coffee, which means I have to pee. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be right back. Hello. Coffee at 3 p.m. It's only two o'clock. I typically have a, a morning coffee and an afternoon coffee. So this is about the time we normally have another one. All right, this is great. Uh, we're two people short of our objective to get 100 people, which I'm pretty excited about. Oh, right, now we need a little bit of glass. So let's switch this to sand. Um, sand and stone may break my bones. And then let's wait for a couple of days and we'll switch this over to glass. Hey, what's up, Atara? What's up, Shandara? Your name's Rhyme in an interesting way. You thought I was central time. No, 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 mountain time. Alberta is in the mountains. I like that there's a little arrow if it's trending in a positive direction. I, I like that.
I don't understand how I haven't made these tools yet, though. Like, that should be done. Plus three. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, 15 to 20 days and the new people will arrive. So, unfortunately, I think that means by the time they get here, these houses are going to need to be reserviced. So, I built them too early, but that's okay. What was the dad's ski report from yesterday? Should be good. I'm going to go skiing tomorrow. Uh, I think there's something like three to four inches of fresh snow. I mean, it'll probably be skied off today. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited to go skiing tomorrow. It's been a while. It's been a while because it's been minus 40. Actually, what's the weather report supposed to be tomorrow? Oh, it's only minus... It's only minus 16 right now, chat. Heat wave. <gasps> it's only supposed to be like minus 5 to minus 10 tomorrow. Oh my god. Hey, when it, was, when it goes from minus 40 to this, so something something that people don't appreciate, right? You hear minus 40, and then you hear minus 15, and you're like, dang, that's still cold, right? That goes from cold to cold, and there's no change. But if you thought about, wait, sorry, a disaster in the distance. Hold on. The air is burning our throats, and the sky is reddening. What are we going to do? Remain calm. What? What? Hold on, let's tell the story. So if you think about a 25 degree Celsius weather change, I'm gonna pause the game, I need to tell the story. That's the difference between zero degrees and 25 degrees, which is the difference between I'm cold and I need a sweater and beach temperature, right? Like that's a huge temperature swing, which is also how cold minus 40 is. Oh my God, right? You don't even need hand warmers for minus five? I tend to do all right. I wear a ski face sock regardless, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, uh, smoke clouds. I'm very curious what this means. We observed a large fire in the distance. We are unfortunately familiar with the situation. Though severely diminished, our species is still the main cause of these fires. We can't say when or if it will be extinguished, if it will spread to us or even if we can intervene. However, it's certain that we'll be exposed to smoke and all the hazards that it carries. Oh, man. I mean, this is... <laughs> this is very relatable, which is kind of unfortunate. Minus... Okay, stay indoors, avoid exposure, keep a lookout. Get a bonus to morale, but everyone takes a health hit. Fires are brought under control before they occur. I've got lots of resources stockpiled. Let's get everybody inside, right? Protective restrictions for the next six days. Meat production is down 75%. Huh. It's definitely going to hamper our glass production, eh? <laughs> Oh no, our economy. Yeah, we're fine. Yo, we're fine. We're fine. It doesn't even look like it's affecting everybody equally, right? Minus seven to everybody. Minus 45 workforce to everybody. What does minus 45 to... Oh, I just bring down the work hours. That's fine. So morale is still good. Past couple days have been the first time you could go outside without the cold digging into your skin. It's been so cold, as soon as you go outside, you start the cough. I don't know how many of you have experienced that level of cold before. Anyways, a vital suggestion. We need more people. Great idea. Where are you going to find more people? We can form small envoys and send them off in certain directions. Hopefully, some of them will discover communities who are unaware of our existence and are willing to join us. Be a good idea to give these envoys some of our best crafted products, like fresh food, a shiny hammer, or a brand new clean outfit to help persuade and uplift people who know nothing but deprivation. 
We can use this initiative as a periodic action if you'd like. I love this idea. Send out small envoys of hope. That's us, a brew hope over here. All right, so our scouts down here are finding some stuff. And then up here, a scout one just been chilling, not doing anything. All right, do I have any glass? I have seven glass, which means I can start construction of the maintenance building now. Well, kind of. Soon. You can go right there. Breathing through your nose also helps. Oh, on the on the extra cold days, maybe. I mean, like you're not wrong. I still find I'm coughing. I just breathe very slowly. Little baby breaths. Oh. So anybody who's been in the wildfire area knows that the rain, oh, the rain brings such great relief from the smoke. Great news. Four new children were born this year. Four adults have grown up. Great news. Now. We still have resources to mine over here. That's good to double check. Over here, still got lots of stuff. Almost out of wood. And over here, we are hunting. That's about it. And we destroyed the gatherer place. That's good. So I think what we need to do is we're actually going to remove that workforce for logs. And we're going to remove... Uh, that one's still fine. But what I probably want to do is I probably want to extend this road all the way down. And we probably want to make a new gathering camp. Yeah, to chop chop all this wood right here, right? Look at that excellent chop chop. Can we make the new residences? Let's see. So residence requires glass and wire. So not quite. Um, we should be able to discover wire after we get power grid. Oh no, we can do that. We just don't have um, enough bricks to unlock it yet. Oh no, no, that one actually needs copper. So we need copper first. Copper requires bricks uh, and bricks are not being made because we're making glass instead, which implies that we probably need a second roastery. Roastery. Got coffee on the brain. Uh, we need a second kiln. <laughs> there. So I need glass and stuff to upgrade it later, but you know what? Let's just go to bricks for now. Bricks seem much more high demand. And then we can get that, that fired up afterwards, right? Field camp construction is done. Let's get that chop chop going, shall we? Now. Oh yeah, we're doing great for production here. Right, that's probably because we have a minus 45 to workforce, so. <laughs> ah, there we go. The maintenance building is constructed. Now, what 
What does this do for me? It costs 290 uh, maintenance intensity. So let's get um, let's get two more crafts people here. And maybe I just need this to be like fully staffed or something. Fifty-four per day. You know what? I don't believe I need this anymore. How is our consumption so low? I guess the three soup kitchens. Wait, that's a problem. Wait, that's a serious problem. Right, that's because my worker output's so terrible. Interesting. No, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Hey, what's up, Storm God? All right, cannot wait for these 20 days to go by. It's going to be a big, big day for us all. The new soup kitchens get workers. They did, but the thing to remember is because of the smoke. Uh, we have a huge, basically, like, huge penalty to work. So you can see our workforce is only working at 10%, right? So we add plus 75 to labor. But because of all the penalties and the smoke restrictions, we're actually only producing 10 so our possible efficiency is way lower than it actually is. So that'll that'll fix itself eventually. There we go. So now if we look at our new production, it was 22. Great. We got two new craftsmen. Get them both in there. Oh, interesting. Daily upkeep need. We have a daily upkeep of one glass needed. A growling can be heard. These sounds can only come from a machine. Are our ears deceiving us? What's going on? What, you, what in the? There's a cutscene. There's a boat? There's a boat! That looks like a war boat. Hello, boat boat? I'm sure they're friendly. It's going to mess up that seagull. That seagull's having a bad time. <laughs> uh... Now, is this friend shaped? Preservers of the old ways. Demand for a meeting. Demand. I come on behalf of the Confederation of Autonomous City States. My name, my name is Senior Colonel J. Hamilton. <laughs> I can't do that voice. Commander of the 13th Squadron. I extend my greetings to you. I demand a meeting. Are they polite or not polite? This part, I like this line. I don't like this line. Let me guess. Chief, Captain, Mayor. I at least hope you don't call yourself General or Governor. I can see your whole village getting worked up upon my arrival. The beautiful machine that carried me here <laughs> is called the TMS Horror. Hey, uh, boat people, boat people, what does TMS stand for? What does what does TMS mean?
their majesties. <clears throat> hey, welcome, friend. I do stream. I've been streaming full time for five years. Welcome on in. Good to see you. That man's ship. <laughs> I do okay, the NB Mo monarch. I like that. That's fine. Yeah. On the way home, we had the unfortunate series of incidents. We lost one of our engines in a violent storm that lasted for two weeks straight, and three of our comrades were severely wounded. Despite an unresponsive rudder and a malfunctioning engine, thanks to my vast seamanship and leadership skills, we managed to follow the coastline and avoid being tossed around the open seas. All right. I like that they call their ship the Horror. This, my ship. I like that. All right. This is fine. We're glad you didn't incur any serious losses. Jeez. If I thought you sufficiently advanced, I would have liked to stay and establish diplomatic relations on behalf of the Confederation. I have to give a very pompous voice. Unfortunately, you seem to be a bunch of stragglers. <laughs> Therefore, without further ado, I request your support for a repair for which we cannot give anything in return. <laughs> We'd also need to replenish our stock of supplies. Normally, a Confederate officer would not condescend to ask for anything from the small and desperate like you. But today, the circumstances depend demand it. Think hard about your answer. The Confederation does not make trades, but it always responds to rejected demands. Wow! Wow! Wow. We will provide necessary assistance for 10 days. Labor theft. 355 ingots. The painful but sensible choice. I don't see any reason to help. A risky option considering you know very little about them. Leave and take your broken ship with you. We can't even produce steel yet. Is such bravado necessary? Chief, these people have a working warship. <laughs> I'm sad there's no that is my ship now answer. Wow, they went straight. Uh, hello, peasant. I'm going to see. I don't see any reason to help you. Oh. Another bunch of fools who think that they are the center of the world and can overcome anything. Allow me to broaden your perspective. This is probably fine. This is the DMS Horror from Confederation of Autonomous City States 13th Fleet. All civilians, evacuate the coastline immediately. This is a warning. I repeat, evacuate the coastline immediately. Uh-huh. My trees. That was a warning shot. I believe that was an adequate showcase. If you still find it difficult to understand, we can provide more examples. Now, what do you say? Dang. Provide, I don't have, 1,400 meat? Bruh. Bruh. Wow, we're getting bullied. You know what's kind of interesting, though? I mean, we're in the campaign. We're in the story, right? Very interesting. Can you click the event to take supplies out? It doesn't look like it, right? Like we've tried to do this before. Um, and so it just looks like we just have to wait to produce those. Unless anybody else who's played the game can find a way to put stuff into this, we just wait. I hope this bully can protect us from other bigger bullies. I don't know if that's how bullies work. 
Isn't that like giving protection to the mafia or something like that? The idea? You just waited? What do you mean you just waited? Like you didn't talk to them and they just left Ink Slayer? I can dump resources, but I can't give them resources. It's the older brother strategy. That's kind of funny. All right, what do we got here? We got bricks. What do we got here? We got glass, right? We don't need workers for glass yet, but I do need that. Uh, hello, I need, oh, right. You know what I can do? It's the winter time and I don't have any farmers. So I'll put those people making glass. Convert my village to vegetarian? Again, we're fine. Like, we have the meat. We have the meat production as well. Uh, we have the iron. We have the tools. We just gotta wait, which kind of honks. That's a thick resource bar? Thank you. I'm very good at survival games. <laughs> Labor theft. Wow. Feels bad, huh? Oh, I'm not making any sand, am I? How can I make glass if I don't have sand? All right. We now have sand. Uh, we now have glass. Okay. Okay. Now, the good news is in 10 days, we're going to get 20 new people. Uh, the bad news is these houses are going to sit empty until then, which kind of sucks. Can I poison their meat? Oh, God. Can you imagine? Oh, Ink Slayer is saying they didn't wait for the bully to leave. They just, they just chilled and waited for that to fill up. Yeah. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really, really weird that I can't take resources directly from my stockpile and give it here so that the labor theft goes away faster, right? Like, this is going to take forever to fill and everybody's unhappy while it's happening. Feels kind of lose-lose, to be honest. Everybody disliked that. And now we play the waiting game. Lose Lose seems to be the name of the event. I mean, it does. It does do a great job of world building though, right? Like that's kind of fun. On a scale of Stardew to Frostpunk, it's not that grim. Honestly, Frostpunk is very, very, very grim. Uh, I would say this is, if you if you move away from the aesthetics, this is kind of equivalent to, I mean, Timberborn is so cute, you don't see it. But mechanically, it feels the same as Timberborn. Or um, Endzone, Surviving the Endzone is another game we stream that's pretty similar to that. I don't know if as many people are familiar with it. What is that? What is that icon? Relevant structure has not been established yet. Oh, sure. Wait, that's so weird, though. I guess we didn't build those scout places in a lot of places. Yeah, despite the aesthetic, and that was actually one of my worries with this game, was that this was going to be really dark or very Frostpunk. And it hasn't been, which is a huge relief. Because I loved the aesthetic of Frostpunk. I, mechanically, I loved Frostpunk. I have never felt so kicked in the stomach playing a game as when I played that game. I just could not handle that. Maybe if I was playing alone, it'd be a little bit easier. But like live in front of an audience as well, having to make those choices, oh, that felt so bad. All right, end of the year. How do we do? 
Three days. Right. Caused a fire. I forgot our kitchen's burned down. We lost somebody. 81% replenishment of stuff. That's okay. All right, one person. We'll add them to the... I think the building maintenance is probably fine. Nope. Sure isn't. Wow, so there's just a tax on labor. A tax on our workforce in order to get the maximum build speed on everything. All right, so it is now vegetable season, which means I need to pull labor off from somewhere. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say we're good on paper for now and get vegetables so that the bullies will leave us alone sooner. <laughs> Huge mineral deposit, great. How you doing, Mr. Gibberish? I'm having a blast. Okay. So, how are we doing on our technology here? We've learned about sand. Right, we're short on bricks. That's what the bottleneck was. And it's going to take a while to get there because of the labor theft. Everyone's just kind of sadly, sadly producing what they can in the meantime, you know? Now, we got cats and dogs earlier. I wonder if after that decision we can zoom in and see them like running around anywhere. Curious if this is a timed event. I mean, we are playing the campaign and it's probably scripted, right? Which is fine. Sometimes, sometimes games just give you bad choices, unfortunately. Sometimes that's just how games be. All right. Welcome all of our new neighbors, everybody. Oh, one second. Not quite. Ooh, the lowland. Uncharted territory. Lots of resources. So Scout 1 has gone north. Scout 2 is going south into the lowland. There we go. Objective complete. Welcome to... Ooh. Oh! Oh, so 20 people doesn't mean 20 workers. It actually meant 11 workers, two craftsmen, and five children. A sudden, sharp, but welcome increase in our population. That's huge. 20 new people when our population was 113 is a big increase, right? Now, ooh, all right. I'm getting a little bit nervous about our food situation here. And I might actually have to build another cook shack. Because, uh, yikes. You know what? I think we need to, I think we need to actually start rationing our food a little bit better here. Which is bad for morale, but, uh, everybody starving to death is also bad for morale. Holy moly. Ooh, a small but abandoned settlement. That's kind of cool. All right. So we're getting a happiness boost here, which hopefully offsets it to the point that I can make anything. Oh, this is really spooky. More soup, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> I beg of you. They've taken all of our tools. Wow. That honks. Four per day. Oof.
legitimately kind of spooky right now. Hey, everybody. Uh, we need... All right, we're at medium. I can't really go much lower than this. I'm completely out of tools. No, 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 no. Let's keep our water distribution high. We can just build another well. Just drill another well, right? Yeah, we're completely out of tools. You know what? I got the labor for this. Let's make ourselves a, another smeltery. Just try and get rid of these hosers as, as quickly as possible, you know? And we can build another tool shack on the other side as well. We were doing so well. We're getting bullied, everybody. Do we need to produce vegetables as well to get them to leave? We are producing vegetables. I think the way this one works, though, is it's it's harvest-based. So every 13 days, we get one large harvest as opposed to uh, consistent production, like we do from gathering, right? Which makes sense. We found the abandoned settlement. We can explore deeper into the region, even if nothing useful turns up. Okay, we need to research with care. So hold on. We're in the abandoned settlement area. It's kind of interesting. The malice from extortion is gone. That's huge. Also, excellent word choice on the word malice. All right, how are we doing for food here? Finally, oh my goodness, we're just starting to turn it around now. Holy moly. It's a good thing I built three extra kitchens there, maybe just two. There we go. Oh, a merchant has just appeared. A group of travelers has appeared as well. Good, 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 good. That got legitimately spooky. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I think we change this to, I think it's not great. I think we change this to fish just because they're taxing our meat and it's the least efficient form of food we can make, but at least it gets us somewhere, right? We're sitting on almost 2000 fish, so I should probably start cooking them. Okay, meat's almost done. Iron and tools are ramping up, especially now that our production is not terrible anymore. An unfamiliar skyline. Just like the stories of the first day, even the night seems to be losing its darkness. For a few days now, the sun has been shining brighter and stronger. Today is the seventh day of these events, and if our guesses and the stories are correct, we're about to experience the same scenario again. There's nothing we can do but wait and watch, okay? Hey, what's up, Paul? Hi, Serge. Vale says hi from my house. Oh, the group is getting together. Wait, lore. Hold on. Oh, these are the uh, the solar flares that wiped out society. Bad omen, a solar storm. We saw it with our own eyes. Half a century later, the same disaster is upon us again. We're not as fragile as the modern humans were when they faced it. But we're sure it will bring nothing but harm. How and when, only time will tell. Dang. Uh, so yeah. Hi, Paul. Hi, Vale. 
I'm very jealous that you two are hanging out in person. We'll be in Vancouver soon. Dang. They say modern humans, postmodern humans. So the premise of this game is that an apocalypse wiped out huge swaths of humanity. And everybody that exists now has never experienced there's no memory. There's no living memory of the before times. So like through word of mouth, we've passed on what happened, but like basically everybody now, I'm going to buy all these tools. Everybody now has never really experienced it, if that makes sense. All right, we're going to buy all their tools, and I think we're going to leave it at that. That's scout number two, huh? Hundred and thirteen workers with no tools. Yep. Hey, we got, wow, 10 more workers is actually really big. And that also just got us a new Chivo. All right, let's get these tools going. Oh, you know what else we can do? Let's go back to our mine over here. There we go. Why is our workforce still penalized? We're fine. Oh, new cycle acceleration. So for the first time, we've actually hit the new cycle before we ran out of tech in the previous one. Oh, that's great news. Oh, infirmary. We can actually learn about medicine now. Time to modernize a new milestone. As we continue to grow, the volume and variety of our needs will likewise expand. There can be no further progress without more potent energy sources to support the growing need for production. Coal is the most valuable resource. Okay. So they want us to start making coal. Develop a static turbine and build a coal generator. Amazing. Morning, Sin. So where is all of my tool consumption going? Oh, it's because of the lumber. So, oh, you know what? We don't need to give them as many tools now. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to demolish this building because we'll we'll slowly rebuild. And it's uh, it's actually taxing us on our our lumber. Can I upgrade this building? Wire, not yet. So. We now have enough brick that we can learn insulated furnaces. That'll get us copper ingots and we can start to make wires and we can start to upgrade our buildings, which is going to be very exciting. Our food is going up at over a hundred per day, which is very important. We need to stockpile before we get to the winter. I think everything is looking pretty good here, except of course, for the fact that the bullies are still here, like can't do anything about the bullies, right? Uh, I guess I could make a second farm. I can put more people in the new lumber yard. Oh, thank you. You're right. Nice spot, the Elrad. Uh, I might be short on housing. I'm almost certainly short on housing. Right. I just used up all my wood again. Shoot. Ah, it's probably fine.
these bullies. Oh, am I positive on water again yet? I'm still not. That's bad. Turns out agriculture is very water expensive. So I can just put a well way out here. Trying to put that right off the road. Yeah, hopefully the sailors just leave peacefully, right? And they just they just kind of peace. They just kind of dip. They go, you know what? We won't mention anything that happened here and we'll never be back. That, that's my hope. You think that's realistic? If I say yes, will you make, make me feel better? Yes, please. Just lie to me if you have to. And we'll never hear from them again. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Let's get some more veggies going. I feel like, yeah, we want to try and get there before autumn is done. I'd hate to have to go through one more year. I mean, the funny thing to think about is they've just been sitting there in our harbor threatening us for like two years, right? <laughs> What's that? I need another well. Can I build one that hits both of these? Build a well there. Build a well out here. Any chance of putting some explosives on there? Yeah, they didn't really give us the option to, you know, poison the meat or anything. All right, so we got access to copper now. And then finally, we want to turn that into wires, which requires copper. So I'm not making copper yet. Well, as soon as the iron ingots are done, I'll switch one of these over to be a copper mine. How are we doing for clothing here? Actually, now that food is higher, you know what I can probably do? I can probably increase morale by bumping the meals up, you know? So plus 70 per day. Clothing, 25 per day. That's a problem. Let's go back down. Let's just go down to regular clothing. Because uh, I didn't realize we we're actually starting to go a little over. Give them all the wheat with the weird fungus. Oh, I wish. So this doesn't quite have as good of location efficiency. I didn't, I wasn't paying enough attention when I made that, but that's fine. A new frontier towards a better life. We should take care to preserve our momentum. Our revolutionary progress in energy production has paved the way for coming up with products that we've theorized but never attempted to produce before. We've set our sights on miraculous medicines to drinks with thousands of flavors. We can enrich our lives by realizing these dearly missed commodities. For this objective, developed earned rights and pressurized systems, produce drinks and medicine, 
Start daily distribution to your people through taverns and infirmaries and observe the benefits. What's with the spacing? Is that weird to anyone else? The double space? Oh, you know what it is? You know what it is? It's when you set a required width uh, and, and they want to use the full left to right. So it changes the spacing so that it looks like a nice clean block of text. Yeah. Justified. All right, produce medicine, produce drinks. Interesting. Much like a newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I got you now, Chad. I got you. Oh, heck. So, sorry. Apologies. I just realized uh, I have to call it here. I've run out of time. Specifically, I have to take my car to the garage. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Man, my car is uh, getting kind of expensive lately. I had to replace my brakes, and now my power stealing, steering is starting to scream at me. So I have to get that checked out. And uh, we started a bit late today, so the day went by really quickly. Everybody, thanks for hanging out. Hope you're having a great day. Appreciate all the support, the subs, and the bits. And uh, if you like this game and you want to see more of it, let me know. If you're in Discord, let me know there. We've got a stream game channel. Would love your feedback. Uh, otherwise, I don't know, whichever way you like to take, take, that's the wrong word. Whichever way you like to contact me, I'm always down for the feedback. Uh, finding out that there's a new Timberborn update. I'm very interested in doing another play of the Beaver game because I know folks are a big fan of that one. So look forward to all of that. Um, next week on Monday, I'm going to be taking a full week off. I'm going to be flying to Victoria for work, doing a bunch of stuff with the lovely people over at Loading Ready Run. So there'll be no home streams from Monday to Monday. So you've got Saturday, Sunday for two more streams here. We'll find out what we want to do then. Actually, maybe I'll ask Discord. Ooh, we'll do a little community vote to see what you're up to there. But otherwise, thanks for being here. Thank you for the good vibes. If you're new, give a follow. I'd love it if you came back. And yeah, we'll be live at 9 a.m. Mountain Time on Saturday with something. Something, something, something. I want to raid somebody. Let's raid Lur. Lur is just going live with some Magic the Gathering. So I'll send you over that way. This is my boss. Don't embarrass me. Wheeler's online? I raid Wheeler like every other day. I thought about it. I thought about it. He gets a lot of my raids. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.